we are going live in 5 4 3 2 1 we are live now uh, good evening everyone uh, as we decided last week uh, today we are going to have session of uh, tuberculosis of spine and uh, myself dr aditya kashikar uh, i'll be presenting on the same topic i I'll, i'll start uh, sharing uh, the today's ppt good evening uh, dr nene thanks sir for uh, uh, taking out the, your valuable time Uh, is my screen uh, visible? Hello. Visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, I'll start with one uh, case. A uh, 24-year-old male who presented to my clinic uh, with dull aching pain since last three weeks. Progressive weakness in both lower limbs. Uh, deficit since last one week. and he was non walker with ball bladder involvement for last 3 days so this was the mri picture where there was a d12 level uh, affection of the body with anterior epidural abscesses so this is the commonest thing what we come across in our day to day clinical practice uh, where patients with these backaches along with neuro deficits they come with with or without ball bladder involvement so most of the times when we see their mri as we come across these epidural abscesses causing cord compression so uh, today we'll brush on this very important topic of spinal tuberculosis so if we take take the history of this disease we can see evidences of tb as back as 5000 bc era era it is seen in egyptian era also and there is mentioning of this uh, disease in rigveda as well So year by year, this is the last uh, roughly around one fifty years. This is the uh, evolution of TB. One can say has taken place in medical science. Uh, while talking about the microbiology of this disease, the main organism, as we all know, is tuberculous bacilli, and there are many other uh, mycobacterial uh, types. So there are other typical mycobacteria as well. One third of the population uh, in the world is affected by TB, and out of that, half of those are in India. Five million new cases uh, occur in uh, Asia annually, and WHO has declared TB as global emergency. Final TB constitutes around two percent of all cases of TB. If we talk about uh, the extent of disease in India, then. Uh, ex- uh, TB constitutes the extra pulmonary type of TB constitutes around three percent of all cases. Out of these, ten percent are skeletal TB, and out of that, half of uh, half of them are spine TB. And India is the uh, epicenter of uh, TB. You one can say thirty-seven percent of world TB deaths occur uh, in India, and around five lakhs to seven point five lakhs deaths annually uh, occur due to TB. If we talk about the pathology of the spinal tuberculosis, we know the mode of infection is through hematogenous area from primary focus of either lungs, lymph nodes, and other uh, foci. And sometimes latent TB is there inside, and that gets uh, reactivated due to immunosuppression. So, if we see the pathological lesions of TB, it can present in terms of abscesses, granulomas, spondylar discitis, osteitis. Paradiscal lesions or or typical presentations like affection of posterior elements. So these are few examples where gross abscesses are seen, or it can present just with a uh, ondular discitis like picture, or osteitis, just osteitis, just vertebral body affection. Paradiscal uh, lesions are uh, the common lesions. And a typical spinal TB like single vertebra disease, concentric collapse, primary vertebra presentations can be variable. 
If you see the histopathology of this disease, the Langen giant cell type uh, is the diagnostic uh, type in, uh, in, in this diagnosis. Brown cell or granular bars are also seen. So whether spinal uh, tuberculosis is a clinical disease or radiological disease. So if you look into detail, then first thing is MRI is done for all cases. Uh, that is the gold standard of treatment. But whatever is seen in on MRI, for example, whenever we come across first one MRI, that need not be TB always. So if you see all these pictures uh, shown in this slide, they have all signs suggestive of uh, TB primary disease. And maybe uh, the primary clinician had thought of uh, TB and they started patients on empirical AKT. And when detailed study or biopsy of these lesions were done, they were found to have these differential diagnosis mimicking TB. So, atypic, so radiological presentation can be variable. It can be disc sparing lesions or central body lesions, vertebra plana like paradiscal, multiple skip lesions or sclerotic osteitis. <clears throat> so if we see the differential diagnosis of this clinical radiological uh, TB like uh, differentials are infection, pyogenic, uh, benign tumors like GCT or ABC, malignant tumors, osteoporotic fracture, sometimes Anderson's region, which is seen in ankylosing spondylitis. They can also mimic like spondylitis status like picture. So usually workup starts with blood. Mantux is obsolete now these days. Radiologically, definitely X-ray, MRI, and sometimes CT as well is to be done. Biopsy is at most important. If we talk about the X-ray, usually we see osteopenia, implant erosion also can be seen, vertebral collapse on presentation one can see. And soft tissue shadows also sometimes we can see, especially on the AP view. But to uh, notice all these changes on X-ray, around 40% of the calcification has to be seen. Then only positive findings on X-ray can be uh, noticeable. So lytic lesions less than 1.5 centimeters can be missed on X-ray. And that's the reason diagnosis of all kind of such kind of diagnosis uh, can be delayed by three to four months. So if we talk about MRI, the advantages are it detects the early uh, pathology in early stages of the pathology. Whole spine sequence can be uh, can be taken. For example, if patient comes with, let's say, mid-back pain, and if you want to rule out any other level region as well, so whole spine can give you a good idea about that. Delineates the extent of the region, how many levels, what exactly, which part of the spine is involved. So the exact anatomical location of the pathology can be delineated. Prognostication also can be, uh, to a certain extent, uh, can be the, uh, made out from that. And these days, this is the gold standard of uh, address imaging its concern. So in MRI, we usually see marrow edema, which is seen as hyper intense bone on detuated image. We can see end plate erosion, paravertebral or osteovertebral soft tissue affection. And obviously, frank destruction, collapses, and abscesses are very well noticed on MRI. Uh, abscess causing cord compression and uh, changes because of that can also be seen. Role of CT is usually seen in destructive lesions and where uh, it, it is very much important from planning point of view uh, because the reconstruction part has to be decided depending on the destruction caused by the disease. It is also very much useful in occipital cervical TB to differentiate between neuronegative spondylar arthropathy, uh, arthropathy and degenerative or infective soft tissue pathology. So, clinical, uh, so usually clinical radiological diagnosis these days, when, whenever you come across such kind of patients with these uh, radiological images, if you don't have facilities of uh, proper further uh, investigations like biopsies, still uh, maybe you can say 15, 20 years back, empirical AKT used to be started straight away. But believe me, it, it 
can cause more problems in future. So if at all you come across these kind of patients, be, be aware of the fact that they might be having TB. And you should strive hard to get proper diagnosis. You cannot just rely on clinical and radiological suspicion. So biopsy is must. Take it. Uh, this is a blanket statement. One should strive hard to take biopsy for all patients. Let it be CT guided biopsy, or you can do biopsy uh, by yourself in uh, operation theater under fluoroscopic guidance. But biopsy has to be done. Granulation tissue or pus. Uh, one can take, uh, which prepare the area just like any other surgical preparation, what we do, clean that area thoroughly, use 11 rods, uh, thicker needles, like uh, junction needle or cork needle. Multiple samples we need to take, either from same site or maybe you can, if, if, for example, if vertebral body along with adjacent disc is uh, involved, try to take biopsies from both pedicles, maybe. Same sample in sterile container, uh, one in formalin, one in normal saline. I will tell you the significance of that in the uh, following slide. And send these uh, samples to reliable uh, lab at the earliest. So this is one of the examples where we did fluoroscopy guided uh, biopsy of the TB lesion. So as I said earlier also that attempt of tissue diagnosis has to be done in all cases. So this is very important slide. So uh, the sample has to be divided into sample A and sample B. Sample A uh, in 10% formalin. So this sample will go for histopathological uh, diagnosis. Sample B can be collected in normal saline. And with this sample, these eight tests can be carried out. Gram stain, AFG stain, aerobic, anaerobic culture, fungal culture, lactic midget, gene expert, and line probation. So in olden days, LG medium was the medium used for uh, culture of the TB, but it used to take very long time for uh, results to come. Whereas in modern days, uh, with the advent of modern techniques, we have backtech midget, which is a gold standard for uh, TB detection by culture way. Uh, the result usually comes in a uh, matter of three to six weeks. Gene expert is also very much important uh, test to be carried out in all uh, cases. And the, uh, it helps in early detection of TB as well as detection of refractation resistance in uh, in two days. It's in two days. It's not two hours. Sorry. Line probe assay. Uh, it detects re resistance to refractation, INH, vinylones, and amino glycosides in around two days uh, time. ASR, CRP. These are uh, non-specific inflammatory markers. Uh, broadly, one can do. These markers for uh, progression of regression of the disease, but frankly speaking, these are uh, very much non-specific. TB, IgG, and IgM; these are completely obsolete um, modes of uh, test, and one should not be doing these days. Now we'll come to treatment part: whether one has to go for operative treatment or uh, non-operative treatment. If we talk about the non-surgical management of TB spine, one has to understand that spinal TB in the absence of prostate deformity and deadly com uh, complication is a medical disease. So mind you, TB is a medical disease. So all uh, these journals published by our unit only, uh, if you go through, through all these articles, you will come across that uh, the, the non-operative treatment of it is very much effective. So general protocol for uh, conservative management is primary AKT, two months of uh, EHRZ, and then following maintenance uh, period from seven to ten months of EHR. So it can be supplemented with calcium, vitamin D, put patient to complete bed rest for six weeks, and activity modification and restriction. Frankly speaking, these days, uh, there is no additional adva uh, advantage of having streptomycin in our regime. Ensure that uh, whatever doses of these drugs you are giving to patients, these are correct doses as per their weight. Uh, excellent method of taking rifampicin, like they have to take this rifampicin early uh, morning with empty stomach. Explain them side effects, uh, like with rifampicin intake, they will be having urine discoloration. So, 
that has to be told well in advance to patient at the time of start of treatment. And also probable duration of treatment. You have to prime patients that how much time uh, they can expect uh, to, to, to take the, this AKT. If, if, if uh, cultures are negative and there is poor response to empirical AKT, uh, whatever has been given, you have to think of doing repeat biopsy because you need to confirm what you are dealing with. There is no role of adding single uh, drug in, at this stage because many times you come across uh, patients coming to you that the prior clinician has added one more drug to uh, their ongoing primary line AKT. And this is the recipe for uh, developing MDR talks in, at later stage. So in, at this stage, involve a chest physician, if at all you have that facility with you. Uh, so empirical line second AKD can be started uh, with their consultation until new culture reports of repeat biopsy are available with you. Since, for example, I, I stay uh, at a metropolitan city where I have facilities of chest physician available at my disposal. So right from beginning of the I usually involve chest physician for my uh, all suspected TB patients. Now, what is the frequency one can uh, expect uh, or how frequently you have to do imaging? So imaging or any testing. So lab or clinical tests, uh, we have to do every third month, repeat MRI either third or fourth month and Compare that MRI with the previous MRI just to see the response of treatment uh, and how radiologically patient is getting better. So this is one example at zero months, at three months of AKT and 12 months of AKT. If you see, there is almost a uh, yield region. So there is one scenario where patient is clinically getting better, but radiologic, if, uh, radiologically, if you see, especially the first follow-up MRI. Sir, can you please explain the previous slide, sir? Yes, sir. I was just showing uh, the, the, uh, the progression of the disease uh, in the sense of the healing process. The progressive healing of the disease at 0 months, 3 months, and 12 months after starting AKT. So it's getting better. I just just an example of that. Nothing major specific in this. I hope your doubt is clear. Hello. So there is clinical scenario where a patient is getting clinically better, but radiologically there is working on especially first follow-up MRI. So either you have done imaging too early in the disease stage when symptoms not fully set in, or it can be just a reactive inflammation after starting AKT. These are two postulates one can think of. But don't get uh, uh, worried. If at, all patient, if at all patient is doing clinically well, then just stick to the same reg regime and continue with your ongoing management. So there are rapid responders. So, so this is one example where in three months time, uh, the lesion has shown a tremendous recovery. The epidural abscess is seen here and here. If you see at three months, it's almost gone. So these are one of these fast responders one can get sometimes. So uh, monitoring wise, clinically, if you ask, you can ask patients about how much they have gained weight after starting AKT, whether their appetite has improved, uh, how is the pain severity, even the mobility, uh, like the smallest example of turning in bed or getting up from sitting position. So these things. They, on their own, they'll say that they are finding themselves uh, better compared to the earlier stage. MRI-wise, you will see reduction in soft tissue, reduction in bone edema, and obviously certain lab markers also will be uh, seen uh, at decreasing trend. So this, this question is very much important. What is the endpoint of AKT? So if you see this MRI at six months, this is the axial gut showing Loculated multiple abscesses at 12, 12 months also. After at 12 months, you have stopped AKT because we, you see there is no progression and clinically patient is doing well. Those uh, abscesses, are, abscesses are more organized compared to the previous MRI. And 
six months after stopping ACT, uh, if you repeat their MRI, which, which we usually do, like once ACT is stopped, you have to repeat your MRI after at least four or six months later, just to see after stopping ACT, how they are responding. So here, there is further betterment in abscesses. So the current consensus uh, for a stop, a stoppage of AKT is around 6 to 12 months uh, uh, until hard evidence uh, is available to the contrary. Model, but there should not be a thumb rule. It has to be case-to-case -case basis. The decision has to be done on uh, case-to-case basis. And there is no evidence or there is no thumb rule that uh, treatment has to go on for 18 to 24 months. And mind you, this is applicable for patients who are sensitive for primary AKT. Sir, this sir. Hello. Sir. Yeah. Sir, sir, sir. Doctor S M Tuli used to argue about this eighteen to twenty-four months of middle path regime, right. long-term ATT. So, sir, I mean, yeah. So, uh, this is our own paper where we have shown that uh, eighteen to twenty-four months is not Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These papers are the recent papers done uh, maybe five years back. So this is the latest evidence where if patient is on primary AKT and if they really respond well to the ongoing primary, even past responders where we have stopped AKT at six months also have been seen. And both clinically and radiologically, they have some very good results. Sir, are there any parameters that you find or think that they fit into a bracket that this this would be a fast responder and this would be a late responder something some criteria so most of the time these are young individuals without major medical comorbidities so uh, for example if young individual having tuberculosis and for example 70 year old having uh, tb along with medical comorbidities like diabetes and hypertension hypothyroid just for example so we have seen that age group wise and medical comorbidity wise, there is difference that these patients, they respond really better. Okay, so uh, still the study is still on and uh, we uh, might come up with uh, radiological evidences or telltale signs where one can expect which can be uh, a fast responder or a delayed responder, you can say. Thank you, sir. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Aditya, I want to say something, please. Can I please? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, 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 I'm, I don't know about your paper, but uh, uh, how long the follow-up of your paper was? Uh, patient, sir? Which oh, six months? Minimum follow-up of two years before. Sir, minimum follow-up two years. I don't know because I am learning from you people only. But uh, Thuli, sir, follow-up was, I think, the patient were something like 15 years, 16 years, 10 years, 12 years. Vishal, can I jump in here? I'll just clarify because this was yeah. my paper. Okay, sir. Please, sir. Please. So, uh, what we did was we randomized patients. So, this uh, Tuli's papers are all retrospective uh, papers. There's nothing against him. He's our teacher. But his were retrospective clinical case studies. Our paper was a prospective double-blinded study, which means that every patient was randomly allocated a uh, uh, plan six months or 12 months. The minimum criteria for inclusion was that the patient had to be biopsy proven TB with primary sensitivity. Pediatric population was uh, kept out. Surgical as well as non-surgical patients were included. And randomization was done by a computer program. And the uh, primary investigator, which is me, was also unaware. So blinded to the result. Um, <laughs> yeah, TB uh, treatment was stopped at 6 or 12 months based on randomization. We had 50 patients that ended up in the uh, six-month group and 50 that ended up in the 12-month uh, group. So it was an equal distribution. There were no crossovers. Not a single patient from the uh, six-month went to the 12-month group. Um, we stopped AKT and we continued monitoring them with clinical as well as MRI data for two years after. If there was no recurrence at the end of two years, we considered this as a heel TB. And with all these stringent criteria, we still found that there was no difference in the recurrence pattern of one in each group recurred actually. 
So there was no difference in the recurrence pattern, which confirmed that uh, giving six months, because this is like a great, this is one of the few class two data is available, like a randomized trial. And uh, it was a single center, open labeled prospective randomized clinical trial. So uh, the, barring the fact that there were only 100 patients, everything else was right about this. So this from a uh, class one data becomes a class two data. So all I'm trying to say is that in the past, we would judge um, the presence of TB. We would continue AKT on the basis of clinical pain. And that pain is uncertain. People will have pain even after TB uh, treatment is over based on the deformity or destruction. And, the, and based on the MRI and the MRI would show, uh, you know, uh, soft tissue even after TB is healed. It's sterile soft tissue. Just to give you an example, when uh, chest physicians treat pulmonary uh, effusion, they stop AKT at six months regardless of whether there's effusion on the X-ray or no, because it's sterile, um, you know, liquid rather than a pulmonary effusion of tuberculosis. So we followed the same criteria and uh, today we still follow the same criteria. We go by we go we uh, decide healing based on clinical first um laboratory and radiological second and third in that order i hope that is clear vishal you have any uh, uh, questions uh no i don't have any question but i'll still request you because uh, just i'm not saying anything just i have want to no say no you're welcome to challenge because uh, this is an open I forum worked and... with, i worked under dr tuli yeah. uh, when i have just finished my diploma course mm. i was preparing for my dnb and i i, I got the opportunity to work under him yeah and trust me i have seen people coming to him I means those who are those who had add for someone has 9 months some had 12 months and they come with the recurrence you know and he asked the only one question he used to ask him, you have how many days you have eaten? So he said, sir, that was our body's body. Somebody said nine, nine months, somebody eight months. But the variation, of, so many people, various people come. But I have seen, sir, recurrence, I have seen with him. I have worked something like five to six months. Not exactly, but I have seen recurrence, sir. And you will be seeing the same thing he used to say about polio. Polio also, same thing. These are the right. two things he used to, people used to come from Afghanistan and he has named that syndrome. Just I'm uh, jumping to polio for just please give me two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. This is a very oh, open forum and we like to hear your opinions he also. To, he used to name them post polio syndrome that the people are completely recovered from polio in the childhood. But after 30 years, they are coming with again the weakness of the lower limb, one side with the politic, politic limb. So now I am seeing this patient in my area. I have just started my private practice two years back itself. And I could see these patients are coming to me the same thing, sir. So yeah. same with the TB also. I don't know if people are doing, maybe we'll also try for the six months and 12 months. Maybe we'll start. Yeah. Just I've seen, so I'm putting my input there, sir. Yeah. So I'll clarify on that, that the commonest cause of recurrence is inadequate dosage or poor intake of drugs. And most of uh, rural India there is inadequate dosing or patients miss their drugs. They don't take their drugs regularly. These people are, uh, of course, we don't include them in our series because most of ours are urban patients who follow up very stringently. So if you uh, defaulted on your drugs or if you've not consumed, so as they gain weight, their uh, drugs have to be upgraded, the drug dosage. So then you're in trouble. So if you're dealing with patients of that nature, you may suit the treatment to suit your, um, you know, your population. So just to back this up, Dr. Rajshekharan also does not give uh, AKT for more than six months across the board for primary uh, TB. So I'm just giving you an overall perspective that's uh, happening in the country. As far as polio is concerned, it's a very well-defined entity, post-polio uh, recurrence. That is not recurrence of polio, but it's recurrence of a uh, muscular deficit that happens uh, late in the day because of an immune reaction rather than uh, the patient getting recurrence of polio. So delayed neurodeficit is a well-known entity in polio and uh, it's not recurrence of polio. So I I hope I can clarify those two for you, Vishal. But uh, I think sure, sure, in, sure. Yeah, in a broader sense, I think you should, uh, you know, adapt the practice that you feel is the best. But um, I mean, I'm going to still stand out here and say that the era of 18 months of AKT for primary TB is over. And, uh, you know, 12 months is still agreeable, but anything, in fact, you know, our, our minimum is six months. So we still stick to six, nine or 12. But uh, more than 12 months of primary AKT, if it's given in the right dosage, monitored and made sure that the patient is taking it, I think is uh, is is the past now. Uh, so it works for you, Vishal. Okay, okay, sir. sure. We'll try, sir, for the 12 months. Maybe we'll start and we'll collecting the data so that we can add to the it. Yeah, there are more sure. questions. Shashank and Umang. Uh, Aditya, you... Sir, hello. 
Yes. Can I can I ask a question, sir? Of course. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, here in the Gujarat, they have uh, all. Uh, I think it is in the India also. The tuberculosis is a notifiable disease, yeah. and we have to <laughs> give data to the government, and they are providing their own medicines, even though they are uh, having the tuberculosis of spine. So WHO has uh, given the guidelines that you need not give the AKT. throughout the week only three times yeah or four days a week and uh, they they are giving their medicines to the patient directly so we uh, what is your call is it true is it uh, causing any problem or is it uh, a correct method so dots as i understand is largely given up the newest who regimen suggests no dots uh for a uh, tb of the spine it becomes difficult because mostly these patients are immobile and uh, they are not able to go to the centers there is a very strong data that came out of gujarat uh, about 4 or 5 years ago which uh, which actually compared dots with non dots and they suggested that the dots had an equal result as non dots so that's as far as our uh, you know our experience goes we never use dots though we uh, notify the disease we uh, what we do in you know our private practice setups is that we refer tb patients to tb specialists for akt and they do the notification and they uh, kind of handle the drugs but uh, my wife is uh, one of the leading chest physicians in the country and she confirms with me that dots has been given up you know across the world now so uh, we could do some more r and d unless someone else in the audience has better information um that's all i would know about it Umang and Shashank. Uh, sir, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, one question. Uh, what I wanted to ask is uh, slightly different from this perspective is uh, the pediatric age group. Uh, when you have uh, so pediatric age group has two problems. One is that they end up having a uh, even a healed cox has a chance of progressing with the growth of the spine. So the point is that when you're doing uh, probably a kyphosis correction in these patients, do you recommend to start A restart AKT for these patients post-op, and if yes, then how many months and the regimen for the same? So the specialty about pediatric population is there's a very high incidence of MDR TB. Uh, the others, so that's got nothing to do with uh, you know it's your drug drug regimen completely changes. The other specialty is that because bones are small and cartilaginous, there's very high uh, you know amount of destructions and deformities. but to answer your question specifically there is no role of starting akt if you are treating a healed deformity in pediatric tb because the recurrence rates of uh, tb again given that the patient has been astute with taking his drugs and his dosages have been corrected uh, the recurrence rate is not any higher so the simple answer to the question is we do not restart akt when we are doing a deformity correction in a old healed tb in a pediatric uh, you know population so you have not found any uh, like Absolutely no, and we published oh, no. Our, we published our series. Because, uh, so I think uh, the reason I asked is because I think uh, Dr. Tuli's book mentions that any uh, any area which is affected by TB and you're operating post uh, recover uh, like in a healed case, you should ideally give uh, AKT for six months. So just wanted your opinion on. Yeah, that. but I I would again stand out, and I have deep respect for Dr. Tuli. I consider him as a god of. Uh, tuberculosis to be f- uh, frank like every time i meet him i touch his feet literally but uh, this is i think not doesn't no, no longer holds true and i work at wadia hospital which is a pure pediatric hospital so we have extensive experience with uh, this and we are re- routinely doing these surgeries and we do not start it oh thanks sir my question was not answered uh, daily uh, akt is recommended or the who recommendation within the daily like- is recommended Simple oh, answer is daily is recommended. Thank you, Nitin. Hello, sir. Sir. Yeah. So, sir, when you say when you say that uh, e- even after the six months therapy, you you do clinical follow up, laboratory follow up. Does that mean uh, the biopsy also? No, no biopsy, Nitin. Only uh, clinical follow up, uh, CBC, ASR, CRP, inflammatory markers, and MRI at every six months. Right. So we sir, don't do one... it now because this was only for that trial. But now yeah. we do it at least one year after the TB treatment is over, and uh, then we keep it SOS. Sir, sir, at sir, at at one time when we look at these inflammatory markers, we say that they are non-specific. But when it comes to doing the post-op workup, we consider them 
ये करना चाहिए तो सर वो तो नॉन स्पेसिफिक ही ही है तो लास्ट में जाके वो इतने रेलिवेंट क्यों माने जाते हैं या आई फुल्ली अग्री विथ यू सो ई एस आर इज नॉन स्पेसिफिक सी आर पी इज राधर स्पेसिफिक फॉर इन्फ्लमेशन बोथ आर नॉन स्पेसिफिक नॉन स्पेसिफिक फॉर ट्यूबर किलोसिस सो द थिंग दैट वी यूज हियर इज दैट वेन यू वेन यू थिंक अबाउट हाउ डू यू मॉनिटर अ पर्सन हुज ऑन ए के टी के वो ठीक हो रहा है कि नहीं हाउ डू यू मॉनिटर दैट सो वन इज इज क्लिनिकल सिम्टम्स विच कैन गो एनी वेयर बिकॉज यू नो एवरी वन विथ एनी थिंग कंप्लेन्स ऑफ बैक पेन एंड देर आर अदर्स हु स्टॉप कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ पेन थ्री मंथस ऑन ए के टी सो क्लिनिकल सिम्टम्स बिकम्स वन so if your gained weight if your pain is getting less your functionality is improving your appetite is better you would consider this as a good sign and everything else as a bad sign then we look at radiology again radiology as you know the limitation is that um, soft tissue is seen even even after tb is gone and uh, that soft tissue is just a sterile soft tissue and that that is not an indicator so the specific indicator on mri is reconversion of fatty marrow so if you can see edema on a stir image which is gone away and now become fatty marrow because a stir image can distinguish between fat and uh, fluid then yes, you could think of this as healing and then what else do you have left so you have these comparative markers of esr and crp which yeah. by themselves i fully agree with you they are non non specific for tb but if there is a rising trend in these along with some suspicious things on clinical and mri then you would think of that as one of the markers we don't have a fourth marker because the pet scan has very badly flopped in the uh, assessment of tuberculosis we time and again have tried to use the pet scan but it has a very very limited role in tb so these are the only three things we hang on so we use the cbc esr and crp but i fully agree that if i check my esr today and it's high it doesn't mean anything right and sir when we when we look at this paper of yours this 6 versus 12 a single center open label prospective randomized clinical trial and you say there is no crossover sir sir when we look at such trials sir there are in other papers also that you shared earlier there are two terms which are used sir intention to treat analysis and as is treated analysis sir i am wondering sir can you if you can throw some light in yeah, your trial deep, what analysis you deep, use yeah. it is a deep statistical question but intention to treat is the day that you randomize this person you put him in which group that's intention to treat okay. and some of some people cross over so one of the reasons for cross over is they develop some side effects they you know they can't adhere to the therapy the others is that sometimes a patient because they, they are all consented all the patients have a written consent that you may go in this group or that group mm-hmm. and they sometimes say no no i'm not happy i want to be here so uh, mm-hmm. you know urban patients they go they read up and they so those would then cross over to the other group so that those would become as is treated patients uh, sir sir i'll repeat i'll repeat sir what i could gather is ki jab 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 clinician ne choose kiya patient ko ek taraf dalne ka to wo to hai intention to treat correct wo clinician Or, uh, choose nahi karta wo random computer choose karta acha acha random random choose hota hai acha aur sir baad mein fir agar mareez ko mareez ke hisab se jana pad gaya to wo ho gaya as is treated as is treated सो कभी कभी फिफ्टी फिफ्टी आ गए बट ये फिफ्टी में से दो लोग उस ग्रुप में चले गए तो इट बिकम्स फिफ्टी टू एज इज टू ट्रीट एंड फोर्टी एट एज इज टू ट्रीट थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक यू शशांक हेलो सर so i have one question uh, regarding your this paper uh, for where you have uh, stated that 6 to 12 months of anti att is uh, more than sufficient for spinal tv now my question is like uh, we have always considered tuberculosis as a No, disease of poor people it is not very common in affluent people uh, and uh, where the hygiene and nutrition is very much uh, important now uh, now in this case if you like uh, like is this rule very common like if a patient is a affluent patient then we should go for 6 months bare minimum att and somebody who is from a poor strata or lower socio economic strata then we can go for 12 months of att yeah so i'd like to correct that uh, tuberculosis of the spine which is extra pulmonary tb is a tb of reactivation of disease so mostly the, the disease has been acquired by us so i'm 50 i probably acquired it because i'm in an endemic zone i acquired yeah. it in, you know in 1975 or 1977 and uh, yeah. it has remained latent in my body and because of immune deficiency it has got reacquired or it's got re uh, ignited in my body now because of that it's no longer a disease of the uh, poor unfortunately or fortunately our most famous actor has had tb the first name that comes to your mind bollywood actor his daughter in law has had tb and uh, one of our other famous uh, you know uh, 
Bollywood personality. So it's it's a disease of the affluent because stress, diabetes, uh, you know, diet related immune compromise is very very common in the affluent. So that okay. clarifies that first question as far as extra pulmonary TB is concerned. Pulmonary TB is still a direct in inoculation, so it still remains a disease of the of the poor, if you may say. And uh, then as far as, uh, you know, AKT of six months or 12 months goes, I know we are not able to make a very strong recommendation. So maybe uh, for, for everyone or for the masses, uh, take, uh, the recommendation could be that you don't have to give more than 12 months. It's very difficult to say that, you know, who to give six months to, who could who to give 12 months to. That uniformity becomes very difficult. I totally agree with that. And the uh, trial is smaller to, you know, not so big to be able to make a very bold recommendation, which is why uh, the spine recommended that we call this a pilot study. But uh, we have experience of 200 cases, which is unpublished data from Dr. Bhujraj's time, where we have given only 12 months AKT and those follow-ups are 20-year follow-ups. But because they are quite random and haphazard, we are not able to publish those. But th that was the basis of uh, starting this trial. And this trial went through a very strong IRB and they wanted us to show that data before they allowed us to stop AKT at six months. So I think the takeaway is that give 12 months, but not anymore. Okay, sir. So uh, basically, the uh, socioeconomic strata in extra pulmonary TB doesn't have any doesn't big have role. any role. Yes, okay. but so, glad you brought that sir. point out. Yeah, Gaurav, yeah, one sir. question. Yeah. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, Gaurav. Sir, a few of our patients, when they were started on uh, AKT, they show a sudden deterioration of their neurological status in the first few days. What is what is the cause for this paradoxical response sort of thing, sir? Yeah, so the theories are many. One of the theories is, as you mentioned, paradoxical response, where, uh, you know, the fight between the drug and the bug creates more destructive tissue, which causes the neurology. Because as you know, neurology is a mechanical phenomenon. It is not a phenomenon of uh, disease. So paradoxical reaction alludes to that. The initial inflammatory response once the drug is started. But the other theory is that the just by starting AKT, you have not overcome the disease load, as we say. You've just started going after the... So if the disease load is primed to reach a certain level, especially if the bone is about to break and give way and cause kyphosis, the deficit can still happen. The third theory is that if you don't have a drug sensitivity, and at least in our case, our uh, you know experience, many cases are actually MDR. And we get their biopsy and we start them on primary AKT. And by the time their result comes, they've had a deficit. We've operated them. And then we find out that they're MDRTB. So these are the three proposed theories. So what should be No, if there's deficit, you got to operate. See, surgery and mechanical treatment and medical treatment are completely separate. You got to look at them as independent entities. Medicine, how long you give, which, which medicines you give has got nothing to do with their neurology or their uh, deformity. So if you think about that, it's like treating a patient with an osteoporotic uh, fracture. You treat the fracture, but give uh, teriparatide, you know, separately. Yes, sir. yes thank you, Gaurav. Aditya, you can take over. Uh, has... Sir, one yeah. more question. Sir, uh, we do get uh, uh, the supply of uh, ATT on government basis and a private sector. So on your personal practice level, uh, do you find any... A difference in the if the dose is proper and everything the results will be the same or what actually unfortunately we have almost zero patients who are on the government uh, system all okay. of them are on uh, private medicines even the Badia hospital patients go on uh, you know on, so we i don't honestly have data but i told you there was a very strong patient uh, uh, publication from not pub presentation from gujarat where dots yeah. was followed by government uh, regulation and they all did equally well for, as per that uh, you know that paper yeah. from Ahmedabad. Yes, so Perfect. and uh, last uh, last question uh, on your personal practice, which I have uh, on my whatever days I have uh, been practicing, I feel the uh, chances of MDR TB is more towards the uh, crowded cities alive uh, as compared to the third tier or second tier cities. Yeah, that's the largely TB. true. The in non-pulmonary TB, the rate of MDR is lower. Pulmonary TB is higher. Children, the rate of MDR is higher. Referral centers, the rate of MDR is higher. And uh, urban cities, because of cross, you know, crossing over of population, the MDR TB is higher. You're quite right. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Tosif, last question, because Aditya has to con continue his presentation. Yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, in today's era, where more specific and sensitive tests are coming in, like uh, 
gene expert has been replaced almost replaced by gene expert ultra uh, what is role of uh, line crop se in today's era so maybe aditya you you want to take that because a part of your talk lpa there are two types of lpa now and um, aditya do you want to take that uh, uh, basically line crop se uh, has to be done where the uh, the smear is uh, has come positive uh, but at the same time uh, it gives basically uh, lpa gives a sensitivity pattern to all some 20 all. drugs while uh, this thing gives a sensitivity pattern only to two drugs and it's assumed that if you are rcnx i mean rifampicin nh resistant you're considered mdr so lpa according to me in a you know in a referral practice is a must because you don't send lp and the second type of lpa i forget the name again it's something like lpa ultra or some modern lpa which is modern new type of lpa actually doesn't need smear positive patients also so lpa is a test which um, should be used uh, by us which we tend not to use okay aditya you can continue your uh, your lecture so uh, we come to the clinical uh, consumer scenario this is one case where uh, there was clinical uh, suspicion of tb uh, radiological also biopsy also proven for tb so the left side was is the day one mri picture at three months there is worsening of uh, radiological picture and six months further worsening with more epidural abscess so if you see these kind of case scenarios where this is has worsened while patient is on akt always think of drug drug is a resistant so mdr tb as we were discussing in earlier uh, last uh, 10 minutes that mdr tb is uh, always going to be a threat because uh, there are so many reasons that improper uh, dosage improper regimen addition and deletion of uh, anti tb agents so mdr uh, followed by xdi and and last not the least the tdr rates are always going to be there so second line drugs there are so many second line drugs and each one will be having so many side effects uh, at their disposal so whenever we come across these mdr tb most of the times they allow uh, end up with 24 months plus akt regime side effects are very very much uh, troublesome for patients so close monitoring of these side effects are must so whenever the, these patients they complain of these uh, side effects uh, they uh, you have to tell them that they have to intimate you or uh, your test physician with them uh, and so that things can be can be taken care of and close monitoring of acquired resistance is must usually mortality is as high as 20% is seen in mdr tb so uh, there is one more clinical uh, scenario where patient is bit confused that whenever we come across these kind of epidural abscesses causing cord compression its surgery is indicated in all cases so if you see this mri where at day one this is the cord compression picture at three months this is the uh, cord compression yes, sir. Picture, and at the cord compression or hello Doctor yes. Aditya, your your slides are not yes. moving. We are still seeing six yes. versus twelve. It's moving yes. at my. So so no, you sir. you you stop share and again reshare, please. is it visible now yes sir hello yes okay. yeah, yes visible now yeah yeah so uh, if you see these three mri pictures done at 3 months and 12 months just by doing a uh, proper akt treatment this epidural abscess has vanished so that means and uh, it's not necessary that always and always uh, cord compression happened due to this abscess Uh, will need surgical intervention this is one more example 
where mid thoracic level cord compression at day zero and at six months. And you can see this remarkable uh, improvement in radiological picture. One more example, where there is complete resolution of this uh, epidural abscess. So, uh, this is one more paper uh, by uh, Neneser only, that non-operative management in spinal cord compression. So, non-surgical management is as effective uh, as any other treatment in treating these uh, conditions. So, where is the role of non-surgical treatment in, uh, in, in spinal TB? So, where there, there are abscesses where which is loaded by uh, drug resistant to TB. So, basically one needs to understand that TB is, as I mentioned in my one of the earlier slides, that TB is a medical disease. So, you need to uh, respect that fact because that is going to help you in the longer run. So, uh, paravertebral abscesses, one can drain abscesses if those abscesses are causing mass effect. This is load might be high, but as AKD will take over uh, these, uh, that will take care of your abscesses, that will reduce your disease burden as well. Mind you, instability is it. Uh, is a transient uh, phenomenon as far as TB is concerned because there, there will be instability as there will be bed lesion to start with. But if you keep these patients in bed on complete bed rest with appropriate sensitive anti TB treatment, they really do well. As you can see the clinical uh, picture over here, this lady bending forward completely. So when it comes to operative treatment, where do we operate such patients? So elective surgery is done sir, usually. Sir, sir. Yes. Sir, sir, when you show that lady bending, but sir, the, the knees are also bent. <laughs> knees are also bent. I uh, understand. See, these are all old ladies. So you cannot expect them to put their extended position. Okay. See, if you see her uh, back, I mean, flexion. Yeah, forward, yeah. She's doing quite well. Yeah. So yeah. her knees are uh, in bent position. Right. Okay, so as far as uh, these operative treatments are concerned, so usually we operate these patients uh, electively where there is enough evidence of progression of deformity or there is a good evidence of instability both clinically and radiologically. The semi-urgent indication you can say where you are uh, suspecting impending deficit happening with patients. Or urgent or immediate indication, obviously, is rapid neuro, uh, neurological deterioration when patient is under your uh, observation. So, patient where uh, we see neurological deficit 3 by 5 or less, patients who are under conservative trial or uh, trial, they develop neuro, significant neurodeficit. Patients uh, who, whose neurodeficit worsen uh, and especially in children where there are finite age signs uh, as uh, proposed by Rashikran group. So, in current scenario, the surgery remains only posterior approach. Mind you, you can treat all TB pathology uh, from your posterior ap approach itself. The principles are you have to decompress the region. Uh, even if it's in the anterior area, you can very well decompress that from posterior approach. Stabilize it properly posteriorly and reconstruct the anterior region. So, as I mentioned, that decompression and reconstruction of the anterior part can be done thoroughly from the posterior approach. Fixed uninvolved posterior element. The transpedicular uh, decompression is the uh, approach one uh, proposes for these kind of lesions. This is uh, very much accepted and a uh, very good approach as we can uh, uh, approach the anterior disease. We can approach the canal, we can decompress the lesion, we can take proper biopsy sample from this approach. I'll be showing you one uh, demonstration video also how to do this transpedicular decompression. So one of the cases where a uh, 64-year-old female mid thoracic TB with paraparesis very well uh, treated with heart shield and sublaminar wire. When there is anterior collapse or deformity happening, 
so you need to understand that you need to uh, decompress but at the same time after stabilization of your posterior uh, uh, from posterior you need to reconstruct the anterior region otherwise there will be too much of load on posterior uh, fixation and that fixation can give way so one more case where there is uh, stabilization and reconstruction of anterior part done with mesh cage stabilization with pedicle screws tb in elderly population so this is one of the papers of dr nene where uh, uh, pre operative mobility is uh, they found that pre operative mobility is associated with immediate post operative mortality in elderly patients uh, with spinal tuberculosis undergoing surgery the findings identify pre operative immobility as a risk factor for mortality and which could contribute to more detailed prognostic discussion between surgeon and patient before surgery one of the examples where uh, this this 82 year old lady with prior history of iic with unstable angina did, uh, did just stabilization of this region thereby helping her to mobilize her knee so this priority scoring is also one of the paper proposed by nene sir uh, where they found that uh, the more the score is the chances of mortality is more and the less the score is the, their mobility or results are better so tb causing significant deformity so where there is kyphotic uh, deformity happening so always think of uh, planning close wedge osteotomy in such cases and uh, bone to bone connection you can do and shortening of the posterior column one of the examples where uh, the close wedge osteotomy with bone to bone contact and posterior stabilization was done so uh, see always the corrective treatment uh, with appropriate sensitive antibiotic is very much important even if we are contemplating surgical treatment for any kind of Uh, such kind of patients so this is one example where uh, tb lesion was seen surgery was done anterior reconstruction was done by a uh, stand alone graft in one month post op only patient started getting recurrent symptoms so and the reason of this failure of the surgery we found that we were at six six report we found that patient was resistant to primary acid so that means appropriate antibiotic treatment is at most important in such patients also this is one example where multiple surgeries were done or performed on this resistant spinal proven tb and since uh, earlier akt was not properly given when we found when when they found proper culture sensitivity pattern of that particular patient and when proper akt akt was given finally cure we could achieve so that means that excellent surgical technique is not at all a substitute for correct sensitive chemotherapy one needs to keep this in mind so i would like to highlight or want you to take this message at the end of this my uh, lecture is one should have high suspicion of uh, tb uh, diagnosis whenever any clinical or radiological suspicion you have in your mind biopsy and culture has to be done for all these patients if there is no gross deformity or major neurological deficit since it's a medical disease one can still think of conservative treatment the conservative treatment has to be a systematic protocol based treatment mdr tb is these days is very much common and uh, very much has to be at your back of your mind 6 to 12 months ckt is adequate in non resistant cases and usually more than 24 months uh, so minimum three drugs has to be uh, drugs in the resistant tb has to be there so neurological deficits are not absolute indication of surgery and sound healing and well preserved spinal function in achieve, is achievable with non surgical treatment whenever we are contemplating surgery always in in this current era uh, to treat these patients from posterior approach collect adequate sample for culture and histopath decompress the region fix it posteriorly and reconstruct the anterior column 
Thank you. Sir, even in the cervical spine tuberculosis, you advise for posterior approach? It depends on the, how much is the destruction or uh, damage has caused. Because if at all it's anterior, too much of uh, kyphotic deformity, then definitely you can see uh, by and large these principles are applicable for dorsal and lumbar spine in cervical. Sometimes, as you rightly pointed out, that if too much of kyphotic deformity means gross destruction of vertebral column is there, then maybe you may have to go anterior as well. So, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Aditya and it's a good question, Virendra, that in cervical, the predominant approach is anterior because uh, the reason is that the posterior instrumentation is not strong. The instruments we use are usually lateral mass screws. We don't, we rarely use pedicle screws in the neck. So, you need to do an anterior and it's a much easier approach. So, we largely do anterior. Sometimes we do anterior with posterior. If it's a deformity correction, you need to go at the back, you know, do an osteotomy correct and then fill up from the front. So, a variety of combinations is a good question. Yes, sir, uh, if you allow me, uh, yes, sir. That uh, video right now, and then we'll take up questions. Sure. While Umang is asking his question, Umang, would you? Uh, so my question is, would you wait when you have a patient with a gross destruction in the cervical spine with signs of myelopathy? Would you still tell him that I will wait and I will wait it out? and give him AKT and think about what will happen or you'll go in and do a surgery when he's showing si early signs of myelopathy because we all know that myelopathy if caught early and managed or, uh, early has a better outcome than you know waiting for it to deteriorate like what are your points sir? Yes. Aditya do you want to take that? Yeah so basically myelopathy uh, I, uh, for us if it's a walker if the patient is a walker, which means that his uh, power is more than, uh, you know, three by five and his myelopathy score does not allow, I mean, that has not got him bedridden and uh, physically or mechanically, the disease is conservable, which means there's no progressive kyphosis. There's no potential or least potential for the neck to collapse or the back to collapse and cause a bony stenosis. We would still uh, conserve him or at least offer him conservative treatment. Some of them don't buy into it. They say, I don't want to take this chance because we keep, we you know, needing them to follow up. Our physio will see them at home, etc. So some of them buy into a surgical treatment, but we would offer a, a non-surgical treatment because they recover very well. But a non-walker would be offered surgery and someone who has anyway a mechanical destruction, who will, you know, despite neurology being salvaged, is going to go down south if, uh, by, by the mechanics of the spine, would probably go in for surgery early. Thank you, sir. Nitin? Sir, sir, I was... Sir, I was wondering when we look at this uh, D10 to L2 level, uh, uh, sir, how frequently it is noticed that TB related this thrombosis of artery of Adam Chavez and, and maybe something like that, sir, I was wondering, sir. Nitin, there's a new paper that has, uh, not new actually, it's almost 10 years old. That has confirmed that uh, artery of Adam's quiz is bullshit. Basically, it doesn't exist. It exists, but it has no... The role of the artery in causing paraplegia has been grossly overrated. And mostly, we as surgeons use it to hide our sins. Means we've done some musti during surgery and the patient has turned paraplegic and we say, how Adam quiz ko burn kia. That's not true. So, uh, I think as far as we are concerned from this generation forwards, we should forget talking about the artery of Adam's quiz. Sir, sir, ye jo, ye jo, sir, ALD hai, sir, ALD bhi surgery of past ho gaya hai, ya ye, iska bhi kuch hai abhi role? Na, 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 ALD ke variations achche a gaye. Uh, ALD Achha. by, by its uh, native, or the, by its native form, just involved going through the ribs and draining the abscess. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it's too big an approach to just drain an abscess when you can do it with a pigtail and a CT scan. Okay. You see, but we use the ALD approach to reconstruct anteriorly. And I think Dr. Aditya might be showing something uh, of that, that variety. Right. And sir, the last thing, sir, 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 uh, sir, I have done, sir, sir, quite, quite, sir, many, sir, sir, abhi, sir, pichle, do saal mein, sir, many, sir, do, uh, sir, many, sir, do ALD kiye, sir, meri ko nahi pata tha baaki chizo ka, sir, ek ALD mein kya hua, ki sir, uska L1 ka, वो था टीबी सर बाद में बाद में सर उसके उस एरिया के अंदर में मतलब देर वाज ग्लायोसिस एट एट द लेवल ऑफ डी ट्वेल्व समथिंग लाइक दैट तो सर आई वाज वंडरिंग कि शायद मैंने कुछ खेला कर दिया इसलिए ग्लायोसिस हो गया कॉर्ड में या ग्लायोसिस इज अ इज अ स्कारिंग ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड व्हिच मींस इट्स टिपिकली 
without wanting to blame you nitin <laughs> it's the fiddling that you've done with the neural tissues mm-hmm. and yes, one may problem aati hai ki you can't cut the root so you end up you know retracting more to get in the front i think the rule is at the conus level you can't even breathe on the conus like leave alone retraction and the beauty of ald is that you can make a lateral approach without actually yeah. seeing the spinal uh, you know spi- spinal tissue thank you sir sabse hota hai don't worry nitin hum log ke sab ne aise uh, problems kiye uh umang sir uh, sir uh, one question is uh, about how many levels one is you decide to fix whether it's three about two down or three up three down and uh, when would you do an anterior reconstruction so the answer lies in your question because if you're doing an anterior reconstruction you can reduce the amount of fixation so you would do an anterior reconstruction in two situations one is where you need to save levels like in the lumbar spine and you would do it in a situation where there's a collapse which is going to open up which which you're not able to close from the back uh, this is a judgment it's not a hard like rule cast in stone but as a surgeon if you see that there's going to be a big defect in the front uh, and or a deformity you would err towards doing an anterior reconstruction in any role of splinted surgery like you know as yeah yeah, yeah. we know, do lots of it but it's is done typically in a central body lesion with a you know axial kind of collapse possible rather than someone who's got a kyphosis okay. which is being corrected oh thank you thank you yes aditya you can go ahead can you can you see my uh, video priya we can see your screen but not the video uh sir meantime we'll keep taking questions yeah yeah please please carry on sir what is anderson lesion sir anderson anderson lesion sir anderson lesion is nothing but uh, it's a fracture it's post traumatic usually fracture seen in ankylosing spondylitis patients okay and the uh, lesion seen on mri the often differential diagnosis is uh, spondylodiscitis so often okay. you get confused that uh, ankylosing uh, spondylitis patient if that patient comes with severe back pain with maybe deformity kyphotic deformity and uh, severe pain and if you do their mri you may see that there is three column fracture along with very infection like uh, trans uh, means uh, spondylodiscitis uh, discitis like picture Oh, that is that is nothing but a uh, Anderson lesion. Thank you, sir. Uh, Gaurav, you have a question. Okay. So, with regard to that paradoxical reaction thing, uh, both of my patients who were being treated on that conservative line, sir, they showed that a reaction thing or the worsening of neurological status within the first week itself. and both of them went on to recover completely with the continuation of the treatment so should we jump in at that time for the surgical intervention or should we wait for some days to see whether it is becoming a yeah i mean as you have shown in your cases waiting is a good option but that's provided the neurology is just subtle the um, i mean the take away from your both cases and your experience is that don't jump to a very early change in uh, early and slight change in neurology but i think most of us as surgeons they can i'm interested to know gaurav what uh, what made you wait when they were sent on treatment the, the actually the thing was that sir, the patient when he came to our hospital they were walking and were only complaining of back pain severe back pain so we did an mri and everything and the neurology was completely intact at that time so we went for an mri and uh, we saw spondylodiscitis kind of a lesion and everything the blood parameters were in line with ed so we started them on ekt within uh, i suppose of the first patient on the third day started complaining of sudden weakness in both of his legs and he was very apprehensive because of that but uh, we along with my neurologist we both counseled him that we could wait this this kind of thing happens because of the paradoxical thing and everything <laughs> and we waited for some 5 to 6 days and within one week his neurological status improved and that that patient uh, that patient has completely healed sir he is okay he is fine he's Lovely. so i think that's astute clinical judgment and that patient is going to be your most grateful patient well done gaurav thank you sir oh, was that patient given any steroids 
no not not initially no 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 we did not opt for thyroid even when his uh, neurological status improved great and uh, despite not giving that he improved and uh, both both of them in fact so the the main issue with this is the uh, the patients become very apprehensive and they jump to the conclusion that you have done something wrong or the treatment is not working and something of that sort so that was the main issue with uh, tackling this thing sir true i think uh, the same is uh, kind of pathophysiologically related to lepra reactions so if you ah, see yes, yeah, yeah yeah so so that is a story a lot of patient lot of people do give uh, steroids but uh, yes. i think it's it's uh, a personal choice yeah thank you so much okay can you uh, see my uh, video over here yes now clean and clear yeah yes so this is one case i'll i'll start uh, from the beginning yes transpedicular it's a demonstration video of transpedicular decompression at uh, d10 e11 fox uh, spine can see the collapse of uh, vertebral body mri showing spondylodiscatic picture with d10 vertebral body collapse epidural abscess for the pictorial presentation so patient positioning skin marking was done of the arm especially at dorsal level skin marking is very much important this is the uh, this is the instability this is the instability uh, which is quite quite seen over here the so usual dissection of periosteal dissection of the region interspinous of uh, ligament is taken off here we are using a uh, instead of pedicle screws sublaminar wire and uh, hard shield for fixation purpose so these are the steps so here a uh, inter interspinous ligament is taken off with the help of a uh, small nibbler and later on with the help of calcium punch so now here uh, calcium is punch calcium punch is put in the interlaminar space where the flamen is flamen flamen is taken off on either side so that uh, the cord is cord surface is seen So this is called as interlaminar uh, preparation. So wherever you you are planning to put wire, so this is the sublaminar wire. It has got bent, so you have to bend it in a such a way where you can negotiate your wire underneath the surface of the lamina. It simply pops out. You can see the tip of the uh, wire has come out from upper interlaminar space, and with the help of needle holder. it has been pulled up pulled over so these wires are taken out on either side main dekhe hai main thane thoda hai pehle phone par hum ek conference mein hai so this is the way sir one question ek sir yeah isn't the pedicular screw fixation is a better way to fix Yeah, yeah. that we'll talk about that we'll talk about uh, we'll we'll complete this uh, demo first and then we'll come to that part as well okay thank you so once we uh, put all wires okay, i'll run through this video the same thing is done above and below the lesion so the here now I'll take it back a little bit. So here you can notice here that the middle part, here uh, the lesion level is, and below and uh, basically distal and proximally the levels. How many levels you are going to fix it? That that many levels you have put your sublaminar wire. 
now we will come to the uh, business area where you are taking out the spinous process there uh, where you are planning to do laminectomy and decompression and transvertebral decompression so usual laminectomy process is carried out so now cord is open laminectomy has been done if at all you come across uh, uh, any gran granulation tissue whatever it within permissible limit whatever it can be taken out you can collect it for biopsy purpose you have to be very really gentle while handling the cord at this level now we'll come to the transpedicular decompression part so here there is this is one pedicle this is other pedicle so one root is going over here one root is going over here so the transpedicular approach has to be between two roots so the part of uh, facet and pars has to be taken out so that you are completely lying on the lateral aspect of the cord there is you can notice this is the lateral edge of the cord on this side so now when i start the video you will see that cord handling apart from say uh, separating the stuck tissue other than that there is no not there is no cord handling much so slowly with uh, your pen field you have to dissect the tissue out if at all granulation tissue is seen particularly in this case there was lots of granulation granulation tissue so we are just taking out that uh, granulation tissue by gently separating it out with the once you separate it out from the uh, cord surface then you can use your disc forceps maybe or maybe nibbler to collect that sample take it out piecemeal any bleeders uh, coagulate them with bipolar cautery see this is where the first pocket is seen so you can take a nick on that so here absolutely you are not handling the cord you are going absolutely lateral on uh, on lateral aspect and you are approaching the anterior disease from lateral aspect and very good sample is collected at the same time you are decompressing the cord so this is on one side i am just running through the video so once you are satisfied that you have done the job this is on the other side now the same thing whatever was done on uh, the opposite side is done on this side as well here the first pocket is uh, exposed adequate sample is being collected so now almost you are about to finish your decompression aspect see now cord is completely free anteriorly as well as you can see the free movement of the rubber catheter put across this is the heart shield wiring i think we'll stop the video over here but the whole idea was to show how uh, how how uh, transpedicular decompression is done we can discuss uh, the topic now hello so there was a question about uh, sublaminar wires versus um, pedicle yeah. screws so uh, if at all uh, many times you come across patients of uh, elderly age group where tb is one thing what you are primarily doing surgery for but at the same time because of the old age they also have uh, concomitant osteoporosis 
So, for example, in osteoporotic bone, even though we have very good medical screws uh, meant for osteoporotic bone, but still uh, putting those screws in osteoporotic bone in a disease pathology of TB, uh, we avoid putting uh, medical screws in such scenarios where we prefer sublaminar wires. For sublaminar wire, the main hold is at the cortical bone and uh, they offer uh, axial collapse or concentric collapse, thereby helping in uh, closing of the anterior uh, gap and help in heal further healing. And obviously, as TB is a medical disease, AKT will uh, take care of the medical part, but as far as stabilization is concerned, it can be very well done in osteoporotic bone. So, pedicle screws are uh, preferred in young individuals where you know that bone quality is going to be good, obviously, and that will help in your uh, follow-up MRI as well. So many times in heart shield patients where uh, repeat imaging has to be done, usually we then uh, do CT scans because the MRI gives lots of artifacts at that level and you are not able to judge the response to the treatment. So in such scenarios, the follow-up scans are CT scans, not MRI scans. So I've just shared my screen to exemplify what Dr. Aditya was saying. Look at this case here. There is a concentric kind of a collapse with minimum kyphosis, especially minimum kyphosis to require correction because it's a mid-thoracic spine. So here you can fix at the back in situ. And uh, we still know that as the disease heals, it's going to slowly settle in. And uh, so you're just done a posterior splinted surgery and to allow a anterior concentric, concentric collapse, Sublaminar wires provide a dynamic kind of a fixation. So it works very, very well in these situations. I'm going to quickly show you another situation where you would need to use pedicle screws. So here's a girl with a major deformity. Here you need to correct the collapse and you need, once you correct it, you know, being a wet disease, this is going to open up in the front. So uh, here you use the same TPD approach, but um, mostly in this young person, uh, you know, short fixation with pedicle screws to give you a better control of your kyphosis correction. Uh, and a transfacetal approach rather than a transpedicular approach in this particular case because you can see the place where the soft tissue is located. And um, so transfacetal approach is much like doing a T-lift in the thoracic spine. And you can get across to the middle column. You can get the pus out as you can okay. see in the video. And then, uh, you know, switch. Um, you know, you can even cut the root and then, uh, you know, start uh, putting your cage in the front from the side. You, you kind of thread it through the root so you mm -hmm. cut the root. So it's a slight modification of the original transpedicular approach described by Dr. Bhojraj. This is a transfacetal approach, which is easier sometimes for us to do because it takes you right between the roots. Okay, so I hope that is clear. That was just... Uh, Sir, is there any research paper uh, suggesting superiority of the one method over the other? Like uh, as in pedicle screws versus... versus so pedicle screws yeah. are sublaminar wire, no research paper. We have papers to show the efficacy of sublaminar wires, but no comparative trial. But common sense will tell you that sublaminar wires are useful when the bone is very porotic because they get an extra cortical extra cortical hold on the cortex of the lamina, which is the best preserved bone for osteoporosis. The pull-out strength of sublaminar wires is far better than screws. That has been well established. And uh, places where you're expecting some kind of a collapse post your surgery and you're not actually reconstructed in the front, the sublaminar wires will absorb that collapse better, the screws will start pulling out or they'll break. Aditya, anything else? What other questions, guys? We spoke about uh, diagnosis. We spoke about gene expert, LPA, um, you know, uh, TB um, uh, midget. We spoke about the different um, ways by which the biopsy is taken. Remember that uh, pus has been maligned, but today we know that, uh, you know, sending pus for a sample is, uh, has a far higher poss possibility of showing positive volume. than soft tissue. So don't miss out sending pus. In the past, it was said that pus is just dead tissue, necrotic tissue. There's no sense in sending pus. But pus is important. Remember to send smear. If it's a smear positive case, then you can send LPA. If it's a smear negative case, but on um, AKT, yeah, yeah, yeah. you should send like LPA two, version 2 which is uh, a good test for no, no, no. on AKT. Uh, Gaurav, your question? Ortho TV, can you mute everyone? Except for the speaker? Yes, that's done. Uh, Gaurav? 
Ah uh, yes, sir. Suppose we have three K that years and he has been declared cured and everything. He is clinically uh, and radiologically doing fine, but he has got some residual deformity in his spinal column. So uh, till what uh, time do we restrict his activities as to not to bend forward or how to assess that his instability is not going to increase or his deformity is not going to increase? I mean, what That's I a very case-based question, Gaurav. But if there's no, my, I think we'll ask Dr. Aditya also to answer it. But my uh, version would be that if there's no pain on movements and radiologically yeah. it looks sound, I would allow him to do all activities. And there's okay. further, and of course, in a growing child, regardless of his activities, I would keep a watch on his progression of deformity. Absolutely. Thank so you. we can uh, repeat uh, at least maybe X-ray once in six months. If at all you want to really keep a watch on the progression of the deformity, and obviously clinically, okay. if he's not at all complaining, then you should not be worried about. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, would you operate on a patient who has been given sensitive AKT, but has yet not, you know, shown signs of resolution of pain? Or would you still continue giving him a conservative trial? He's been on sensitive AKT. But the back pain is something which is troubling him a lot. And these are, these are young patient. He's a young patient and wants to be up and about. So would you, in that case, offer surgery? Uh, that's the first question. And secondly, uh, to, uh, to Dr. Aditya, uh, sir, you said that for certain cases of instability, you would uh, prefer conserving these patients because as in your follow-ups, you've seen that the inst uh, it heals. But uh, do you actually think that... Uh, like as uh, we know, Dr. Nene's paper when in OBC, where he said that if it's an instep instability, the problem only fixation is the one short way to go. So do you think TB behaves differently or it's uh, like, what is your take on that? Basically, uh, that slide I was mentioning that instability is a transient phenomenon. Why I said so? Because whenever the active disease is that region is very clear. Obviously, or instability is going to be there because there is no mechanical support over there. So whenever a patient is trying to load that spine in area, there, is, there will be instability, pain, and patient will be in pain. But as uh, I mentioned, that I need with appropriate and uh, sensitive AKT. So I hope that during that process, that uh, AKT will start uh, acting on the lesion. At the same time, as we, as we know that TP deals with solid bone formation. So over a period of time, by the time six six are getting over, at least that region has started become sticky. So clinically also they start feeling better. The pain factor goes down. If not, for example, if you compare or if you ask them that what what was the pain severity? Let's say to start with it was hundred percent pain, and if you ask them at the end of six weeks how much pain is left. So they may say that pain is still around 20 or 30 percent is remaining, but 70 percent they are better. So we have to reassure them that remaining 30 percent also be eased out as AKT is acting on uh, the lesion. And as I said, that the lesion has become sticky. So instability falls, uh, part also gets better. And eventually that heals with solid bone formation. So that's the reason why I said that in instability also sometimes you can just go ahead and do. Uh, continue with your non-operative treatment. If at all, if at all, at the end of six weeks, if that instability is significant enough, that patient is still not able to sit or uh, mobilize uh, to the expectation what we are expecting the patient to do, then obviously you have to think in terms of then surgical intervention. That there is no further role of conservative treatment in that case because uh, on AKT also patient is still uh, having that instability pain then you can offer them surgery. Recently, I have had one, one patient where similar scenario that six weeks of rest, AKT antibiotic, uh, proper AKT was going on. But at the end of six weeks also, patient was having significant instability. So I offered them surgery. And the plan is actually patient is likely to come for surgery in next week. So plan is to do stabilization and repeat biopsy intra-op. So I want to reconfirm that whether we are, though I have sensitivity, sensitivity patterns, but you never know because whether patient during this last six weeks, whether patient is defaulter or what. So uh, go ahead, stabilize the uh, patient and defeat the biopsy. And would you do like, uh, have you, uh, like as you said that now she's, since she's on six weeks AKT, 
so what are the tests which will you know give you better value like because uh, as the question on the group was asked that when is it the like, which will be the sensitive test after six weeks take it line probe assay or probably uh, histopath or what would be your biopsy test will remain same what i showed you on my slide that nine tests usually i ask for so you have to repeat whole set of investigation you cannot really uh, pinpoint or uh, pick up only one or two out of that because you never know that if if at all for example if at all any fungal thing has come up and caused any additional infection which is very rare i am talking about imaginary scenario but you never know so always always go ahead and get full throated all test uh, we have to do it on that sample don't do it one or two tests okay thank you i think most of the test have some amount of false positivity so it is always better to reconfirm if you're any which way is going to do a biopsy agree agree aditya sir kya boliye sir 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 ek taraf sir jaise hum gene expert tb kar rahe hain aur sir tb back tag bhi kar rahe hain to sir ye dono ka thoda sa wo jo pcr wala method hai wo almost same hai to thoda sa repetition sa nahi ho raha hai dono testo mein टीबी बैक्टेक में और जीन एक्सपर्ट टीबी वाले में बट द आप दोनों में टाइम पीरियड देखिए जीन एक्सपर्ट का रिपोर्ट आपको दो दिन में मिल मिल जाता है हां इफ इट ऑल यू नो इन टू डेज टाइम दैट वी आर डीलिंग विद एमडीआरटी यू कैन स्टार्ट दैट सेकंड लाइन ट्रीटमेंट अलोंग विद योर एक्सपोजिशन ओपिनियन देन एंड देयर ओनली अदर देन वेटिंग फॉर बैक्टेक रिपोर्ट टू कम एट थ्री वीक्स और सिक्स वीक्स और बैक्टेक इस पुरानी टेक्नोलॉजी ना तो उसमें डेड बैसिलाई भी पिकअप हो जाते हैं अच्छा बायोपसीटेंट है उतना ही लाइन टोप ऐसे भी इम्पोर्टेंट है सर मतलब की कराना ही कराना है इज द स्टेटमेंट करेक्ट लाइन प्रोप ऐसे का फायदा है वो इट कैन टेल यू ड्रग रेजिस्टेंस टू मल्टीपल ड्रग्स नॉट जस्ट टू ड्रग्स इन स्पेशली वेन यूर सस्पेक्टिंग एमडीआर एंड हेंस द डिक्टम इज के जो बंदा ऑलरेडी एक टी पे है जैसे अभी जो आपने जिक्र किया जो छह हफ्ते एक आठ हफ्ते ले चुका है उसको लाइन प्रो बैसे जरूर कराना है बट अभी लाइन प्रो बैसे वर्जन टू आया है जो एक्स्ट्रा पल्मनरी टीबी में फायदे का है बिकॉज उसमें स्मियर पॉजिटिव की जरूरत नहीं होती है एंड एक्स्ट्रा पल्मनरी टीबी ये स्मियर पॉजिटिव रेयरली होता है जी जी और और सर जब हम जब हम बोन का पीस ले रहे हैं तब तो कोई स्मियर वगैरह नहीं बना सकते हैं करेक्ट करेक्ट ठीक थैंक यू सर सर वेल वी आर फिक्सिंग द ट्यूबरक्यूलर स्पाइन विद पेडिकुलर स्क्रू व्हाट इज योर ओपिनियन शुड वी फिक्स आल्सो द डैमेज वर्टिब्रल बॉडी और शुड लीव इट अलोन इट डिपेंड्स इफ यू आर नीडिंग टू सेव लेवल्स If the situation is that you need to save levels like you're in the lumbar spine, so a index screw dial ke you can you know put a screw in the pedicle because the pedicle is rarely inflamed in the TB spine. But if you don't need to save levels, then up uh, usme you know you don't want to put a screw. So mid thoracic may you would spare uh, the disease vertebra, but in lumbar you would you know use it. Sir, how would you treat defaulters in uh, sport spine, sir? So uh, again, that's a medical treat. Ah, uh, yeah, Aditya, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, uh, Dr. Archer, do you want to take this? Question? So, treat, so treat, treat, yeah. defaulters is a medical de uh, question, and defaulters have to be. uh you know they they are normally tested again because they develop secondary resistance so if there's a potential for doing biopsy and sampling again you should do that and then uh, refer them i mean ideally refer them off straight away to the chest physician because a complicated regimen is put forward assuming rarely that their sensitivity pattern is the same then you can uh, just give them a full you know full round of uh, primary treatment again ashashank uh so i have three uh, questions uh, it's basically open for all sir uh, one as we said that we have to collect two samples sample a for histopath and sample b for all the eight test which we have described so i just wanted to know the practical uh, chances of getting a negative test on holding the sample sometimes like we operate and the sample remains with the relatives or in the hospital campus so what is the duration we should we should process the sample within time 
Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. I'm waiting for that answer. So, Harshal, can you take that question? Uh, yeah, so I, I don't have an absolute answer to it because of the availability of resources with me. But I think yeah. within 24 hours, most of our samples are processed or at least gone to the lab. Uh, uh, we have actually now a practice of preserving, taking a three sample and we preserve one at minus four degrees in our hospital because recently we have found some brucellosis also. And uh, if everything comes negative, we send that sample to the animal uh, testing centers where actually brucellosis is kind of uh, assessed. So, so we have we have that technology available with us. So I'm really not sure about the duration of holding period and the uh, consequence. But anybody else has an opinion, please. Can I take that question? Yeah, yeah. sure, 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 Tosip. Yeah. Yeah. So a holding period of. Uh... Any sample for uh, TB culture is in between 24 to 72 hours. So, uh, uh, if it is preserved and uh, at uh, like uh, 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 less than minus four degrees Celsius in the refrigerator, uh, basically. Okay, thank you. And uh, you have already asked uh, answered my third question itself, sir. Uh, because I was just going to ask, like, if your sample comes negative, what is your last uh, step would you would you would go for and you said that you, most of the time it is brucellosis which you uh, so every, find out every time when we have a suspicion of an infection definitely our uh, tbhs guys are involved but also nowadays we uh, involve ind guys so sorry uh, infectious disease people so id people okay. and and then we kind of take over uh, I'll let them take over the medical part of it uh, as 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 we have discussed all throughout that there are two aspects of the treatment. One is medical management and one is surgical management. So neuro deficits, instability, compressions, these are the aspects that we focus more on uh, in consultation with the team, which is multidisciplinary approach. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir. And uh, last question is like, uh, what is your antibiotic backup, which you give for the patient when you operate any surgery along with AKT going on? So like for how much duration? Because uh, last time uh, there was a uh, fellowship uh, program uh, headed by Dr. Agashe. And uh, in normal terms, he says that we usually give a dose of antibiotic, whatever, in any surgical procedure, uh, one hour, within one hour of the starting of the surgery. If the surgery long, lasts for four hours, then we repeat post-operatively and intraoperatively one dose of antibiotic. That is enough. Is this uh, protocol okay for operating any TB spine as well, or we should be giving it for a longer duration? So I'll, I'll, I'll take that question again. Uh, normally, because we are going to take sample, we don't give antibiotic until the sample is taken. So, yeah. uh, so that we do. And largely, if the surgery is gone more than three hours, uh, then we typically, uh, I typically personally give the second dose of antibiotic. But I would say in international literature, you would not find the same. Okay. So that like uh, intraoperative one sample po uh, post taking uh, the sample and uh, yeah. one after that. And that's enough antibiotic dose which you will be giving even when the AKT is going on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other uh, surgery? Yeah. Mustafa, yes. your question. Thank you very much. Uh, wanted to ask... Uh, if you have an L5 collapse, completely collapsed L5, how would you approach that? So that's a tricky uh, area. L5 becomes a tricky area to approach because, uh, you know, it's uh, it's the base of your spine. So to, to answer your question, my pers my approach for uh, L5 collapse, which needs stabilization, would be two screws in the ilium. So two S2A, you know, one iliac screw, one S2AI screw. Um, probably one screw in the sacrum. So you've got like six hole points below go two above, which is L4 and then L3, and then reconstruct L5. Uh, I currently do it from the back. So I put a cage through from the, you know, trans uh, facetal approach. You thread the cage through and you uh, compress. Optionally, in the past, I've done a lifts. So you do back fixation, go in the front. And if you are able to reach, you know, I normally go transperitoneally and uh, uh, dig this out. The problem is that when you take out the L5 body, you're working on the L4-5 disc which is at the bifurcation of the great vessel. So, you know, you can have a tough time. And uh, so today, now I prefer to do it from the back. Use the same transpedicular approach. 
Yes, to, absolutely. To absolutely. I'll maybe while we are talking, I'll pull out some cases to show you. Sir, as discussed in the morning with morning case, um, the L three uh, four uh, level, L two three level. Sorry. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. L two three levels so in the morning case. Uh, is there any role for only anterior uh, fixation uh, in that case? So Because... uh, actually, yeah, yeah, carry on, carry on. Yeah. No, sir. Please carry on. No, so basically, uh, why do you want to do anterior when you have a better approach available posteriorly? That's what my uh, thought process is. Uh, but yes, anterior can be done for that. Uh, but the hold of a post pedicle screw is much better than any other screws in the body. So I would I would uh, tend to do a posterior all posterior because I don't want to give two scars and two surgeries for the patient. Yeah. No, it, no. If if I go posterior, I'll have to fix till L five. And L five S one will become a junctional point, two level up, two level down. That's what we okay. usually practice. Sir. So, okay. uh, what we do in our center is we'll do just anterior uh, approach with a big electrical graft. Okay. And we have done to this this to uh, around ten, twelve patients, sir, and they are doing fine. And we have avoided uh, this posterior approach as well. Uh, just that their. Uh, uh, what do you say post operative mobility becomes a bit uh, delayed we take it a bit guarded after two weeks or three weeks we we'll, uh, let them uh, bear weight in box sir right yeah that's a very valid approach and uh, uh, vaishak because that was the approach used in the past and uh, even today i think it's very very valid the problem is that most surgeons don't know how to approach anteriorly so you can actually save a level by going anterior So I think that's a good point you brought about. Tosif, question? Uh, yeah, I'll so, just put up the uh, post-op X-ray for that patient if I can find. But yeah, uh, I have that. Yeah, yeah. So, so this was the post-op. I think CM image of that uh, person. We went to L four only, and this was done for her. So that looks good. You've uh, still saved that one level. But I think this has to be case to case basis and surgeon uh, training also. If you're well trained in doing the anterolateral approach, then I think just putting a bone graft there is an option. However, then you have to protect the patient because in the lumbar spine, you know, there's rotational instability, unlike the thoracic spine. So you know, you will have to protect the patient. Tosif. Yeah. So uh, my question is uh, like in today's era, uh, Uh, where to empirical AKT stand? Because uh, like uh, if we consider uh, international literature too, the uh, uh, culture positivity of any sample stands between seventy to seventy five percent. So uh, like how many times to repeat biopsy uh, for that twenty five thirty percent patients? So I uh, take that uh, question, Tosif. Yeah. So the I think you're absolutely right that it's not easy to get culture positivity in uh, TB. It's an extra a TB spine. It's an extra pulmonary tuberculosis, and hence it's a posse bacillary disease. And hence to get culture and smear positive is not that easy. Uh, the methods of doing biopsy in the spine are still quite primitive in most areas in the country. So there's a struggle to do that. And uh, by statistics, the rate of MDR TB in um, The spinal tuberculosis is far lower than MDR TB in pulmonary uh, tuberculosis. So I think there is still a role of uh, empirical AKT in today's era in endemic countries. Um, the only caveats today are that uh, if you are clinically, radiologically sure of the diagnosis, remember there is a ten to fifteen percent chance that you will still be wrong, and you need to share this data with the patient when you start him on empirical treatment. You need to tell him the reason why you are starting him on, on empirical treatment. and the fact that uh, you know it is guesswork and it's a statistically uh, you know prudent uh, treatment but things could go wrong here forwards and give him a choice of doing an open biopsy if you have to there is question in chat box that can laminectomy be done for decompression of lone in tb uh, i beg your pardon decompression of or uh, can laminectomy can be considered the only treatment for uh, operative treatment for uh, tb ah. only laminectomy so you can take that question yeah so most of the times uh, we come across see we, as we discussed throughout my presentation uh, 
presentation also that surgical treatment is usually done wherever there is, for example, instability. So instability, if you say, then there will be collapse and in, uh, structural uh, factors which are destructive in nature, causing cord compression. So only laminectomy per se, as such, is not the modality operative-wise to treat, treat these conditions because invariably these conditions have a structural or anatomical destruction happening along with the uh, neural structure compression. So most of the times, so you can say 99% times, uh, they they have these uh, anatomical uh, destructions. So we have to address them. Uh, so decompression has to be supplemented with stabilization. Right. So just on the point of those, uh, uh, I think the question about anterior, this is one of our old cases. So in lumbar spine, we used to normally do anterior with posterior to, so that we don't have to protect the patient. Here you can see the destruction is much more than just uh, interbody. You had to actually go across two discs. So you had to put a big tricortical graft and then you went to the back and fix. So you got to take a stand on a younger patient with uh, inst unstable back. And here's a you know pretty bad case of... Um, uh, L5 TB. So, um, sorry, it's just loading up. So, this was one of my first L5 TBs, and uh, you can see the see the lesion. And here, I got fooled into thinking that I can do a very smart A lift. In reality, it was not an L5 lesion; it was a L4-5 spondylodiscitis with an L5 S1 spondylodiscitis. So, my anterior approach was going to be from L4 to S1, and hence I chose the wrong transperitoneal uh, trans anterior approach. Uh, this is where I got stuck, if you can see. And, um, you know, I, you in the end, you go to the, you know, go to the bifurcation and you, you put the cage right under the bifurcation. It's the vein which can just open up on you at any time. So I had a real struggle and uh, this is the surgery that I had to do back then. You can see the cage is completely misplaced, but I pinned it down and we have a good long-term follow-up on this guy. So in tuberculosis, you normally get away. But today I would do this exact surgery, but do it all from the back. And, uh, you know, with practice, you can put a big cage from the back and, uh, you know, thread it through the nerve roots. Sir, can I show two L5s actually? I have yes, of uh, course. recently done. Can you see my screen? No. Just a minute. So laminate me for TB is totally given up. You should not do it. In a very rare situation, you should do it where there's a like a TB granuloma which just has to be removed. No fixation needs to be done. You can do a very limited laminotomy on one side. Uh, so, Banshu is going to present cases, no? Yes, yes. Sir. So just for this one. Yeah. So, this was operated to a... Uh, she is a non-worker and she came to us two years after surgery and this was a, a scenario for her. I have just limited images of hers. Is a oh, sorry, they are in not in order, but this is what we ended up doing eventually. And now she's a worker, so this was the construct which was done for her. I'm sorry, it's not in order. I thought it's in. Yeah, and there's again this guy, a, a healed tuberculosis basically. I'll have his video also. Lumbosacral kyphosis and boil and bladder involvement. And this is what the construct we have to do. So we did a laminectomy, decompression, and a, a posterior fusion. All from back. Sir, are those S2 or the LR screws, sir? S2 LR. S two S. Lovely. I think. I think uh, Can we move to uh, Subanshu's case presentations? Yeah, Subanshu, you're online. You're muted, Subanshu. Yeah, I'm here, sir. Thank you, sir. So we can continue the questions, but we'll try to make it into a good mix by showing some cases. Mustafa, your hand is still up. Do you have any other questions? 
Thank you very much. Yeah. Other question I had in Savaiko spine. Uh, do you do cage with a plate or cage alone with cortical bra? I think in tuberculosis is always cage with plate. In degenerative spine, you can you do a standalone cage or a standalone bone graft. But in uh, tuberculosis, you would always want to because the end plates are inflamed. You see, mostly when you put the bone graft, it's in bone that is inflamed. So the bone graft of the cage is likely to counter sink, and you need to protect it. Uh, I'm not able to share my screen. Um. Ortho TV, can you give uh, the right to share screen for Dr. Subanshu? I think he has the right to share the screen. You can, uh, it's for all, open for all actually. Mm. You want it, Subanshu? You mm. want me to do it? Uh, yeah, sir, if you can. The same, same TV, same uh, size which you should send to me? Uh, no, I made some edits. So send me immediately. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Meantime, try by yourself. Any questions? Meantime. So in the meanwhile, uh, I would like to all all delegates that uh, whenever you come across these kind of patients in your regular practice, uh, if you are uh, if you belong to second or third tier city, so how do you approach at your setup at your given place? Anyone would like to take this question? Yes, sir. Sir, we usually go for a histopathological examination. Before that, we will do all the radiological investigation, uh, which is required. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, after the uh, all the blood evaluation with uh, urine uh, culture as well as blood culture, we'll go in for uh, HPE uh, and uh, gene export as well as biopsy, a perkit biopsy or a CD guided biopsy. But usually, CD guided biopsy they come negative. So we most of the times we uh, I do a perfect biopsy, sir. Then okay. following which, if there is no much uh, destruction uh, of the uh, vertebral body or there are no much of collapse, and if it has come uh, tuberculosis, then I would start on ATT regimen for uh, uh, twelve months, sir. It's usually dots what we start here, and uh, we'll straight away get for twelve months with regular follow up, and uh, we I I don't. Uh, Ask for a repeat MRI if clinically they are all right, sir. Uh, just uh, X-rays uh, every three months follow. -up. Okay. If at all it it comes biogenic, then I would go for a uh, uh, stabilization, sir, posterior usually. So you are two able level to two level down. Doctor Vishak, Doctor Vishak. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir, sir. Why why blood culture and urine culture is considered? It's just a routine protocol. Okay. Uh, and it will help you in cases where we are stuck if the biopsy report is negative or okay. uh, everything is negative and something we get and we might try uh, but usually we may go for repeat biopsy rather than uh, 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 just uh, you know uh, on uh, urine culture or blood culture because biopsy is important whatever it is right and when so you that, consider blood culture and urine culture is it aerobic anaerobic and all that kind of a thing or well the what it will help us in determining once when we are stuck, we don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> we'll get That's into right. infection control and then they right. you know, we'll sort out with them and then we uh, come out, come out right. with something. Thank you, plan. thank you. So the case we discussed on the group, actually the urine culture was positive for E. coli and ultimately it was not a TB, it was an uh, E. coli from the biopsy also. Okay, sir. Yeah. So once you oh. can start. Yeah, you tell me when to move ahead. Uh, so move ahead. Yeah, move ahead, sir. Uh, so this uh, is a case of a 31-year-old male with instability back pain, and he has some neuro deficit uh, around grade functional loss. Uh, can anyone describe this MRI for me? Anyone from the? Doctor, can you just take this question? What what? Yes, sir. So the yes, sir. So the MRI shows destruction of L5 vertebra with 
T2 hyper intensity along with certain soft tissue shadows present matlab matlab correct correct you are saying in the, in, the, in the pll area yeah and and some 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 soft tissue shadows in the anterior long term ligament area yeah and and there is spondylodiscitis present over l5 s1 also correct. and and correct. there is there is some extruded fragment at the l of the l5 chondral inferior vertebral end plate yeah correct correct anything else anything else you are seeing in front of sacrum yeah 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 there is there is there is there is there is pre sacral abscess correct correct so what you yes. want to do for this case so for for sir for for this case so there is there is 31 year old male front of section so getting hematological parameters okay which would include hemogram crp yeah. quantitative okay and 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 taking taking a trans pedicular biopsy of uh, l5 correct correct so uh, we did the trans pedicular biopsy for this patient uh, sir you can move ahead and it is biopsy proven uh, sir back back biopsy proven tb sir back back yeah so now what you want to do further he has having instability back pain neuro is also involved sir 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 this patient will also be subjected to that line probe assay and we will know that is he sensitive to primary drugs or secondary drugs yeah so he is sensitive to primary drug we started him on akt also Yeah, but yeah, he yeah, is yeah. he is saying that yeah, I am having instability, back pain. I am having weakness. So what will be your final treatment? You want to treat it conservatively, surgically? How? So, do you have the access sections for this? No, sorry, I don't have. Can I take this question? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, even if the neuro grade is three, I prefer to go for the conservative treatment. I'll uh, explain the patient that uh, we'll take the, we'll take you in the ATD for a minimum of three weeks, and after three weeks, in most cases, it has been seen it has been seen that patients improves, even the neurological deficit improves. Correct, correct. So uh, in a lumbar spine, uh, there is a spacious canal. when you compared it with a thoracic spine na the lumbar spine canal is very spacious the nerves are floating inside and that's why the patient usually present very late when there is any neuro deficit or any deformity since the weight bearing area is also going posterior it's not anterior they also present very late when the bony destruction is maximum and they you won't be able to appreciate any kyphosis or anything there right so what we did here is uh, we uh, counsel them regarding the course of treatment and we said that ki we will observe you for 6 weeks and within 3 weeks he started showing uh, improvement is neurologically and uh, sir go ahead sir please one so this is the uh, one uh, one year follow up of the mri and you are able to see the uh, healing changes happening at the end plate also you are able to appreciate it yes it's visible yeah correct and the uh, abscess is there abscess but it might have calcified and something but it's not casing it's most likely to be a sterile container but other than that it seems to be okay any questions anyone have for this patient sir i was wonder subranshu sir i was yes. wondering wo jo instability hai ha ha wo instability tb ki dawai khane se samay ke sath mein kaise theek ho jati hai because tb heals with arthrosis correct it get fused uh-huh. bony arthrosis uh-huh. so uh-huh. normally it get stabilized its own on its own you are getting it <laughs> how is his bowel movement is there any problem with his bowel movement no 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 nothing so sir this person would have been on bed rest for for a little longer time something like that yeah we generally ask them to do a bed rest for 3 weeks after starting after doing the biopsy after starting the treatment and then we mobilize them with a brace 
And sir, what's the rationale for three weeks only? It it gave us an enough time for the soft tissue to heal. But sir, but sir, as as we were talking that these abscesses they can remain in sterile containers for even even a one year. So I was wondering, ki, sir, what three weeks in under me granulometers inflammation? How? मतलब इतना हील कर जाएगा आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द द टीबी टीबी दिस सॉरी आई इंटरव्यू डॉक्टर नितिन इज नथिंग लाइक जस्ट 3 वीक में ग्रैनुलोमेटस हो जाता है बट वी हैव सीन कि एक होता है ना आदमी को कि 3 सप्ते तक देख लेते हैं अगर वो न्यूरोलॉजिकल डिफिसिट नहीं देता है तो हम ऑपरेट के लिए सोचेंगे बट ट्रस्ट मी डॉक्टर साहब मैं तो अभी बहुत रिसेंटली स्टार्ट किया हूं अपनी लाइफ बट मैंने देखा है वो बड़े मजे से टीबी वाला हील करता है हां आपको पेशेंस रखना पड़ेगा और आपको काउंसिल करना पड़ेगा पेशेंट को हाँ देर आर सम पेशेंट क्योंकि आप जिस शहर में रहते हैं व्हाट विल हैपन इफ यू आर ट्रीटिंग द पेशेंट इन कंजर्वेटिवली समबडी विल से अरे बाबा कल को न्यूरोलॉजिकल डिफिसिट हो जाएगा ऐसा हो जाएगा फर्क सो यू हैव टू मेंटेन दैट कि नहीं मेरे को नहीं करना है अभी बिकॉज इट विल हील ऑफ इट आई हैव सीन ट्रस्ट में इट विल हील इन नाइनटी परसेंट जी जी शुक्रिया करेक्ट एज राइटली सेड Was rightly described by him. I think the lecture with Doctor with what Doctor Aditya has taken has uh, given his respect right now. So we are going for the second case now, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is twenty-four year old male with low back ache, bilateral thigh radiation, no radio, the neuro deficit. Anyone else want to take this MRI? I have marked also the pathology. सर मैं लेता हूँ सर मैं लेता हूँ आ जाओ आ जाओ सर 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 दिस एम आर आई शोज एल टू एल थ्री स्पोडाइलो डिस्काइटिस Correct. With pre-vertebral abscess. Yeah. With with bone marrow edema in the contiguous area of lower half of uh, L two and upper one fourth area of uh, L three, and uh, and on axial sections there is there is abscess present, but but uh, but spine central spinal canal appears to be. intact and uh, there is no compromise on that end yeah correct correct so what do you think from the mri picture what do you think it might be uh, sir so, so there is a... so there is there is infl it, it it seems that it is a disease which is causing inflammation and uh, and that inflammation cause is possibility of underlying infection infection so so, so some some liquid pass and some this thought and some edema looks like an infective pathology correct then what you want to do so doing doing hematological parameters which would include hemogram crp and uh, and getting a biopsy and 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 again what dr aditya told that eight things that dot yeah that line probe essay and yeah sir can i pitching sir yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Please. that yeah. that looks like a paravertebral abscess if i'm not wrong not very clear in mri but on yeah. the axis there there looks a lot of a para uh, psoas abscess actually so we can go in and get a uh, uh, ultrasound guided uh, aspiration or a ct guided aspiration then you know, it becomes much easier for us to treat correct 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 but what do you think it is tb or what No, if it is TB, we can start him on ADT. But if it all comes as pyogenic, yeah, then I think uh, we will have to go in for fixation. Correct. Because so the part, we have to reduce the viral, I mean, bacterial load, disease load. Correct. Okay. So the purpose of showing this uh, uh, MRI is now the MRI is uh, that not TB, as uh, 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 we need the uh, biopsy. For the confirmation, and it on biopsy it came to be sir go ahead, staph aureus. So it this shows that how much important it is just not to rely on your MRI, on your X-rays or your clinical images, 
but you have to do a biopsy even if it's coming negative for first time second time and you have to think about something else other than tb also so anyone can tell how you will be able to differentiate a pyogenic or tb infection in an mri for before this uh, i would like to make one comment in this particular case so if at all you come across pyogenic infection in your biopsy retrospectively if you go back and ask patient the patient so they might be having some uh, uh, antecedent factor like they might be a diabetic or immunocompromised like hiv or they can yeah. be drug addicts correct so there has to be or they are chronic ckd patients many times we come across ckd patients they come with pyogenic in, uh, spondylar discitis so always always uh, uh, suspect whenever you come across in your history taking only if at all you come across such kind of points and if you see any infection in the spine it can be non tb uh, infection just wanted to make this comment yes sir dr aditya dr aditya सर 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 ये जो 24 ईयर ओल्ड मेल होते हैं इनमें कितना फ्रीक्वेंटली सीकेडी मतलब होता होगा मतलब हो सकता है हो सकता है देयर इज नो समथिंग दैट सीकेडी नॉट प्रेजेंट एट 24 ईयर ओल्ड राइट 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 थैंक यू सर आई थिंक व्हाट व्हाट डॉक्टर आदित्य इज ट्राइंग टू टेल यू दैट दीस आर द सर्टेन क्लिनिकल पॉइंट्स व्हिच कैन मेक यू थिंक अदर देन टीबी राइट सर बिकॉज़ फॉर फॉर अस इट इज 1 टीबी 2 टीबी 3 टीबी फर्स्ट सर्जरी डिफरेंट लाइक ऑलवेज टीबी बट बट इट इज बेटर टू थिंक बिकॉज़ एज आई टोल्ड यू द मॉर्निंग केस व्हिच आई स्पेसिफिकली रिमूव द हिस्ट्री फॉर शी वाज हैविंग सम अर्ली लिवर इश्यूज दैट वे सो सो दे ऑलवेज और मोर ऑफन देन नॉट हैव सम ऑफ द अदर इश्यूज बट आई कंप्लीटली अग्री 24 ईयर ओल्ड मेल में विद नो अदर एंटीसिडेंट हिस्ट्री it is difficult to anticipate but then uh, there are other mri or radiological findings which can help you yeah anyone and can anyone else can tell me what will be the difference be- what is the difference between a pyogenic and a tubercular infection uh, which you can tell ki it might not be a tb obviously di- uh, diagnostic will be a confirmatory diagnostic will be a biopsy but si- since this case came anything anyone tb would uh, usually uh, involve uh, paradiscal region or it Correct. could be central or it could be more of anterior or it could be uh, uh, just one lesion um, like in c1c2 uh, we usually get it uh, uh, then it, in pyogenic it is more of uh, involvement of the disc space basically uh, and wow. posterior elements and posterior it is more involved yes and uh, more of uh, 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 neurological deficit are seen mostly in the pyogenic one than and it is usually associated with other uh, uh, parameters uh, health parameters ckd or uh, diabetic or uh, something like that so Uh, correct vaishak uh, as you mentioned na uh, ki uh, the tb infection usually affect the intervertebral disc space or uh, doesn't in- affect the intervertebral disc space because it's a vascular structure also uh, in tb you might see a posterior element involvement extensive paraspinal soft tissue involvement multiple vertebral body involvement uh, sub ligamentous spread which you which as you can see in this case you are not able to find it there is no sub ligamentous spread uh they the disc is totally destroyed the bodies are touching so it indirectly tells you okay this might be something else but obviously you have to do a biopsy to confirm this so uh, thanks both of you for the answer but i'd like you to like i'd like people to approach this question more holistically you have to look at the patient first a person who comes with fulminant pain you know uh, systemic signs fever you know lot of pain like he comes with lot of symptoms Uh, and of course an antecedent history of urinary infection uh, a, uh, a, uh, you know on th- chronic renal disease uh, someone with a lung pathology which, who's like immune compromised these guys become or a post op patient obviously these they become candidates who are likely for pyogenic rather than tb then you look at the x ray the x ray in pyogenic is usually normal and i'll tell you the reason just soon pretty soon and then you look at the mri now the pyogenic infection normally uh, is very very symptomatic so by the time it affects you in a very short time the doctor uh, patient presents to the doctor and hence 
destruction is not a lot and you will see less soft tissue you will see more permeative edema in the bones and of course the disc space will have lit up so it's it looks more dry and uh, you know less fulminant on an mri a uh, tb infection is a slow granulomatous infection where reactions are continuously happening between the infection and the immune system so a lot of destruction is seen lot of soft tissue is seen before the patient actually presents so that's how you would differentiate this and hence the x-ray in a pyogenic is often normal while in a tb it often shows uh, destruction thanks yes thank you sir uh sir you can go ahead so uh this is 71 year old female with a lot of comorbidities uh with bowel bladder involvement and severe instability pain anyone sir bus stop here anyone else want to do anything what they want to see what is a biopsy proven tb investigations all suggest you of tuberculosis uh but she is having deficit Let's invite uh, Virendra. Do you want to take this, Virendra? If you're still there, take this. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. How would um, you this? And this patient is having L five four three two, L one L two destruction, gross destruction is seen in the MRI, and also the sedo posteriorly is impinging upon the uh, cord. So first of all, neurology. I will like to examine the patient, and then. uh the usual laboratory investigation and biopsy should be done if the biopsy comes for the tuberculosis then we should uh decompress the neural elements mm -hmm. by posterior approach and also one or two levels above and below fixation should be done debridement thoroughly and then we should also fix with the cage and bone grafts virendra do you have any non surgical uh, opinion for this patient is would you think surgery straight away i think the answer is yes you would think of surgery yeah, right yeah because there's yeah. so much destruction instability thoracolumbar junctional area significant deficit so then what's the role of a biopsy that was my question would you like to go in straight away or would you like to yeah. biopsy no biopsy is must because sometimes uh, the other pathological organisms can also cause and maybe possible uh, uh, metastatic lesion can also be there so biopsy should be there so uh, without biopsy you will not uh, do surgery in this case yes um anyone else has any other cuz i differ in my opinion on this but i'd uh, like um maybe i don't know who is active right now well sir, you would do, yeah so biopsy yes, means will be performing the surgery will decompress and then uh same time we will fix the and yeah. some tissue will send the uh, sample yeah. for the biopsy yeah so intraoperative biopsy obviously no one will go without it but uh, virendra wants to do biopsy before he plans his operation and i think the rule of that is only if the biopsy result is going to change your plan of treatment if your biopsy result is not going to change your plan of treatment uh, you would not do a biopsy the likelihood of the biopsy showing anything that will make me plan differently i think is low even if this is a cancer you know which is unlikely to be because of the spondylodiscitis even though the cancer my treatment remains the same i have to surgically decompress fix and uh, yes. there's no role of an end block excision i mean the issue of biopsy would come that if the, it turns out to be malignancy i would plan an end block excision rather than a curettage and uh, you know reconstruction then i would uh, force myself to do biopsy pre op the other place where i would do a biopsy pre op is if there's a scope of a non surgical treatment so that's the reason why in this particular case i would go straight in and do surgery rather than do a biopsy and because it will take a lot of time it will take 2 or 3 weeks before all the data from the biopsy comes out um virendra do you okay. still do you want to say something i mean i, I don't know no you are right sir uh, the biopsy can be done as as in the in, in the part of the treatment yes, yes, yes yes perfect perfect subhanshu go ahead uh anything else want to any uh, so we decided ki we want to go for the surgery uh, other in, any, anything else you want to do before we go how for how soon will you operate how soon what? will you we get... can we can rule out all the other possibility of uh, neoplasm or the test especially yes. no no we we have decided we want to go for the surgery correct now uh, uh, if we want to plan for a surgery what other investigation we would like to do you would like to do whole spine whole spine mri correct 
and also the if neoplastic lesion is in the mind then we should also call for the pet we, we have to we have to look for the skip lesion that's why we will go for yes. the screen of the whole spine yes sir okay 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 so what uh, answer i was expecting is an x ray because mri will always going to show you a gross destruction we are planning for a surgery we want to see whether where we can put our anchors uh, that yeah, what i wanted the answer sir go ahead so uh, this is the x ray and in the x ray as you can see there are the 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 sec to uh, two vertebrae is not completely destroyed so we did a ct scan sir go ahead this is the ct scan of the patient which is showing left sided more destruction compared to right sided so now what what would be the plan how we, uh, what, what you will what will you do how you will decompress anterior posterior all posterior it is the all posterior and also we have to debride all the dead tissues which are found out in the operative procedure and uh, anteriorly we have to fix with the cage yeah and two levels above two levels below pedicular screw fixation correct yeah. i like to make one comment you say intraoperative so you are not able to hear you sir aditya sir you can carry on subhanshu ah uh, sir we are not able to hear you no yeah sir can you hear me yes sir yes so basically i just i, I was making one comment that whenever we talk about intra op debridement as we all are orthopedic uh, surgeons and we go in with mindset that we have to debride thoroughly we are very radical in our debridement whenever we try to do our orthopedic brain but we have to understand here there are neural structures nearby and as tb is a uh, medical disease so even if you see uh, there is granulation tissue, uh, tissue or muck over there uh, which is uh, surrounding the neural structure try to take out within safe limit if it's badly stuck with neural structure don't try to uh, pull that out because it's going to be you'll land up damaging your neural structure this yes. is a medical disease your acid is going to take care of that tissue as well that is going to go or vanish over a period of time as the acid will come in action so uh, try to be conservative as, as far as your debridement is concerned uh, in these uh, cases dr aditya yeah sir me. sir i was i was uh, sir i was uh, looking into this sir dr tuli's work on it but sir he talks about as an orthopedic surgeon you pull out that leather and then leather need to go away otherwise it makes a casing of fibrosis so no no i am not saying that you should not be doing debridement you have to do debridement but only thing is by uh, considering not to damage the neural structure that that is the only message i have i would like to give because invariably josh mein hum log we, we try to do as more as possible okay. sir 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 main ye baat isliye puch raha hu kyunki shayad maine usi josh josh mein wo gliosis ho gaya to i think kahin pe kuch error ho gaya ki kam karna chahiye tha but wo wo stripping ke chakkar mein zyada strip ho gaya स्टेबिलाईजेशन so these can be done with um, optimum debridement i'm going to say so you don't need to go and take out bulk and bulk of tissue like dr aditya commented because you're going to make it harder for yourself to do the reconstruction and the uh, you know for stabilization you have to sir, rely sir, on drugs to treat the disease sir dr tuli says ki wo jo peridural fibrosis hai na wo achhi cheez nahi hai usko hata dena बट कहा दिखता है ग्रेन्यूलोमा दिखता है उसकी अगर चेन भी आप ब्रेक कर दो यू डोंट सी पेरिडोल फाइब्रोसिस 
you see granuloma that encases the dura yeah 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 granuloma is like a bangle if you can just disconnect the bangle and mm-hmm. then allow it to uh, you know uh, dry up with medicine that's good enough the constricting yeah. effect should go away हाँ. सर सर वो जो बैंगल है अगर उस बैंगल में से एक सेगमेंट को निकालें सर आई वाज टॉकिंग टू डॉक्टर तुली इन पर्सन देन ही ही यूज़ द सेम आर्गुमेंट एज यू आर सेइंग कि वो जो बैंगल है ना उस बैंगल में से एक सेगमेंट को बाकायदा निकाल देना चाहिए तो तो उसको करने में थोड़ा सा तो वो रफ हो ही जाता है जब उसको निकाल हाँ, वो थोड़ा सा ट्रिकी है बट वॉट आई ट्राइंग टू से यू डोट है होल बैंगल आउट जी जी ये हटा दो बाकी पिघल जाएगा चांस of neurology when you are doing a epidural abscess you know not an abscess an epidural granuloma ji but thoda sa halke se karna padta hai because there's no other way around it ji thank you sir uh abhay sir just one uh, quick comment from you uh, you told that you will do this without uh, doing a biopsy or maybe you can do a biopsy intraoperatively but retrospectively thinking if it turns out to be a metastasis or something like that would you not want to know it's a it's more vascular or tumor and uh, plan your uh, development accordingly so normally you know when you look at the mri you are able to look at the vascular that kind of a vascularity you know if it's a hemangioma or that kind of a vascular tumor you will on it look very bright on the mri so this one does not scare me so if, even if this turned out to be tumor which i'm positive it's not looking at the mri yes, i would, yes. uh, still i don't think do a biopsy from that aspect So next, sir. So this is a sagittal view where you can see the pedicle. This is, uh, uh, sir, go ahead. This is what we did. We did all posterior. Uh, we decompressed from the posterior and we put a cage. So all, go ahead. And this is the final picture of the patients. So you are able to see we went three above and two below, and with a good mesh cage. making a bone to bone contact so that the anterior reconstruction can also be done uh sir, sir go, go ahead go ahead nahi no, go ahead sir you know this one go ahead uh this is an another this is another case 30 year old female l45 spondylodiscitis discitis Anyone else to want to take the MRI? Doctor Shiv Kumar, can you answer this? Hello. Yes, sir. So this is MRI showing a uh, spondylar discitis with a uh, pre-vertebral abscess, paravertebral abscess, as well as the there is abscess in the epidural space also which is compressing the rootlets yeah and uh, there is involvement hyperintense section at the l3 4 level so earlier involvement which is not that evident in the other section correct and uh, in the axils there is a good amount of psoas collection on the both sides correct so what do you want to do further if the i will go think of two dumps if the patient is neurologically intact and well preserved without any stab or instability and all there is, there is a neurology there is neurology involved neurological neurologically what is actually it if the grade is less than 3 i would think of surgical terms if it is more than 3 or 3 I still consider uh, conservative. Okay, so what you will do again? First, we'll get to the whole spine screening, and uh, I'll plan for if the neurology is very worse, I would go with fixation, as there is instability and the neurology is also there, and uh, good decompression with uh, S S two S one and S two idea. and uh, two level above fixation okay anything else want you want to do before any mr any ct yeah, mr whole spine screening is needed must and should yeah to mr screening we did there is no skip lesion now okay so that's what i told my plan if there is no skip, any skip lesions or anything else i would go for two level above fixation s2 s1 and s2 iliac 
with the bind key. Uh, sir, go ahead. So this is the X-ray of the patient, which is showing the gross destruction. The MRI is showing gross destruction of L5 again, but in the X-ray mm -hmm. you can see the vertebral end plate, inferior end plate is still maintained. Uh, sir, go ahead. And uh, this is what we do. We, we did. Sir, go ahead. Yeah, so, we just saw the case being shared by Yeah, yeah. Sir, this is Sir's case only. So this is what we did. These are some of the. Cases. This case was different than the one I showed, uh, by the way. No, no, this, uh, this is very different. I ah, this is done from the back because I had yeah, failed yeah. from the front the first time. That's why we've done it from the back. This is just the lesson learned. Yeah, yeah. This is a different case. Yeah. So, uh, we, uh, these are all Abhisar's case only. Before he used to do anterior also. So, this is how he used to do all anterior, where anterior and posterior also, where he used to put anterior graft by opening. Uh, by the advantage of having anterior surgery, you will be achieve a good debridement, bony to bone contact and graft. But the uh, as sir said, the chances of failure is much more because you are going to have a less uh, screw purchase and everything. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Abhay, sir? Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, so, uh, in this slide, which is right now on the screen, uh, I just wanted to know this uh, implants which you have put in the previous cases. Like, I think so, these are Steffi uh, plates, Steffi, no? they are no Steffi, longer used. Steffi, okay, Steffi, Steffi plates. Steffi. plates so. Okay, okay, sir. thank you. Okay, uh, that's all for today from my side. Harshal, sir, yes, I'll, I'll uh, stop the share. So it was a so, sir, just, for the, yeah. just yes. for the sake of uh, audience, what is uh, what is your uh, today's indication to go anterior? When do you <coughs> go anterior? Very, very little indication to go anterior. But if anything, then it is if I've opened up a big deformity, I would like to fill in anteriorly. But really, almost, almost no indication for me to do a pure anterior surgery. Because now I, we can approach mostly even the bony gibbous from the back. So, um, yeah. in TB, almost no indication. And uh, I've seen you in my in your practice, like I've been with you for some time. So, I've seen you conserving the significant neurology, so-called less than three also. <laughs> so, just just for the sake of patient. Yeah, uh, again, delegates, to, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the bo I'll be too bold, but tell you that I've almost never seen a patient with TB spine deficit not recover. If, if if they don't undergo surgery, they still recover. But like someone pointed out, they do uh, retain some sp uh, uh, spasticity in their recovery. But they recover even from the worst case scenario. So having said that, uh, nowadays I would still not, uh, you know, non-walker, I would still offer surgery. Okay. So that benchmark of uh, level or grade 3 or less it doesn't hold as much truth as it is uh, supposed to. Uh, I would agree. But I think the message should not be that. Yeah. Your, you know, you should be able to absorb, uh, you know, that kind of a deficit. So the message should be that a non-walker, you should offer surgery. If the patient for some reason does not have that operation because he's unfit or whatever, you could yeah. still, you don't have to run away. You can still treat the patient conservatively. Perfect. Shiva, question from you. Uh, sir, my question is, how often do you take the ILAC as tricortical graft for reconstruction? So again, that nowadays we almost rarely, if ever, take it because now there's more and more data suggesting that everything from bone putties, allografts, uh, you know, everything tends to work and the defects caused by the iliac crest can be significant. So nowadays, if we have to use bone graft, we would use a intercortical cancellous graft from the iliac crest, keeping the cortices intact and fill it up in a cage and, uh, you know, put it if you if you still need anterior support. Any sir? other questions? Sir? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, expandable cages versus mesh cages in TB. I think expandable cages should not be used per se. You know, they, they should be your escape route because es expandable cages have two major problems. One is that they lose their, uh, you know, tensile strength. I mean, their actual compressibility strength the minute you expand them or you deploy them because that hinges on one small screw. And the others that the bone graft inside no longer holds. Like you pack an expandable cage with bone graft. The minute you expand it, the bone graft is no longer bridging. So it's full of small gaps. 
So if you're not able to, you've tried hard and not able to put your thread your cage from the back, then you probably resort to an ex expandable cage, but don't primarily commit yourself to an expandable cage. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, crosslink versus no crosslink. So crosslink definitely will add stability to your posterior construct. But uh, you know from today's uh, you know situation, it, it, the expenses are very high. So you would use it if you have, for some reason, left an anterior column poorly supported and not want, not closed it or not filled it. And or if you think in the child, especially the screw hold with the plastic bones is not so good, then you may want to add one or even two uh, cross links. Shiva. So Post-operative post -operative protocol for after fixing with the pedicle screws, how will you mobilize and then? Yeah, ASAP, like ASAP, like immediately, the same day or next day. Like there's no... After you're fixed and after you've reconstructed, there's absolutely no need to re, uh, bed rest the patient. I mean, the entire game is to get him out of bed early. And somebody asked in the beginning that if it's a young patient with pain, would you want to prefer to operate him? I would rather say that if it's an old patient with pain, you'd rather operate him and get him out of bed. Because as our study and many others have shown, people who are older with higher fallacy scores should not be kept in bed for longer. The mortality rate significantly increases, just like a hip fracture. So as an older person, you try to mobilize him fast with a quick reconstruction uh, and a surgery. Shiva, your question? Uh, this is regarding one of my cases, uh, which I saw recently. There was this patient who was 19 years old who was biopsy proven uh, tuber cord spine. And one year later, he got a new MRI showed that the resolution was not there and there was a still persisting disease. And uh, he had a severe back claudication without any deficit. And we suggested him a repeat biopsy. And repeat biopsy showed there is no resistance as such. And this time he had a spinal ventus of both up and as well as his ankle. So what would be your approach for that patient, sir? Continue, the, continue again the same regimen or offer surgery since there is a back claudication and it's no, no instability pain as such. And yeah. You're saying the second biopsy confirmed that there's active tuberculosis. Yes, sir. Which is very un unlikely, you know, if it's a primary drug, I mean, a primary TB. And if he's been, uh, you know, regular with his AKT for the first year, there is something wrong somewhere, you know. So, it sometimes is just contamination shown in the second biopsy. Um, especially, you know, gene expert is uh, pretty, um, uh, pretty prone to contaminations being positive. So, if you want to do that kind of a biopsy, you'd rather have a histopath smear and or an LPA to prove, uh, you know, that it's TB, active TB. It's very unlikely that it's a primary TB and the patient has taken good AKT for a year and it's still, um, you know, active TB. In fact, after a year, if it's still active TB, it's almost uh, given that it's an MDR. Regardless of this, you know, I would leave this headache to my physician colleague, but I would uh, treat this patient surgically because... He has gross neurology and uh, instability, isn't it? And yes, I would, sir. yeah, I would use surgery as the you know source of massive, you know, significant biopsy to confirm what the histopath or the you know your needle biopsy showed. But it's a tricky situation. I agree. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Gaurav. Uh, sir, can you please throw some light on when to decide upon anterior reconstruction or? Support. So, I mean, do we do it only in cases of where I can see some deformity cropping up or in, is there some indication for that? Basically, if there's an anterior defect, it needs to be addressed. If there's no anterior defect, it need not be addressed. Now, how much is the defect is a very difficult question to answer. And you have to visualize it in 3D. Like one cut may show defect, but circumferentially there should be a bone to bone contact. But okay. a significant defect in the front needs to be addressed. You could address it by closing the defect, which means that you take away the posterior three, you know, two-column osteotomy and close it down to get a right. get a bit of opposition, or open it up. In which case, you need to fill it. So the uh, you know the two places where you would want to fill uh, do an anterior reconstruction. One is to fill in a defect, and the other is when you want to save segments by minimizing your levels of fixation. So in the lumbar spine, basically. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Video on how to thread the cage from lateral to L5. Maybe we don't. 
but uh, that the one that i showed you was the only one you have to undersize the cage the question is that how do you thread a cage through lumbar roots without cutting the nerve root so the trick here is that your uh, you know your posterior column also has to be released you have to size your cage maybe 3 or 4 mm smaller than your actual size use a cervical you know a thin cage don't use a thick cage not the thoracic cage a cervical cage and you know kind of push it in and straighten it up and then close on that because the lumbar spine is that way mobile it's quite easy to telescopically close the you know and catch catch that cage i think that's the best way that i can describe this uh, technique okay so i think uh, everyone is tired uh, aditya do you want to please please sir one question can i take one question please yes vishal uh irrespective of the tuberculosis or any back it means uh, you have seen means our and sister means those who are senior colleagues uh, they used to write if any back problem they'll say stop bending forward how often do you think means no, how no, relevant no, it is no, no. uh for any back pain or for tuberculosis for any back for any back pain so again it uh, you would think of this as a clinical question and clinically on forward bending there is no pain there is no you know no sense in asking the patient not to bend forward if it's not an anterior based disease like a disc prolapse or a you know tb for that matter or a vertebral fracture by bending in the front you're not going to cause any harm like for a facetal stenosis i mean a facetal effusion or a facetal arthritis or a retro or a prolisthesis i think bending forward so basically i would ask him to bend in my clinic and if he's easily bending forward i don't give the instruction not to bend forward so much so that even after a laminectomy fixation we don't stop them from bending forward thank you sir yeah thank you so aditya do you want to take uh, charge so um we had this like a uh, third session this is started our uh, virtual therapy program on tb spine today i think everyone enjoyed this class two and a half session on this hot topic uh, i would like to thank uh, all faculty members dr nene dr arshal uh, uh, Dr. Shital Mohit left uh, because of some reason he had to leave early, uh, and all delegates uh, who, who were uh, asking questions uh, actively. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Rashmi for presenting uh, lovely cases. Uh, I would like to thank Ortho TV for uh, their constant support during this fellowship program. We'll be having a fourth session in our series next week. or uh, it will be round about either wednesday or thursday we will intimate you at least two or three days it will be on tumors and the session will be taken by dr priyank patel uh, and the relevant uh, literature a day or two prior uh, will be posted on the group so see you again next week till that time uh, take care bye good night thank you good night, good night. Uh, thank good you night. sir thank you sir